good morning everyone or good afternoon or good evening depending upon which time zone you are in so we will start with the next session for this id uh, our summer school iadf summer school and the next speaker with us is dr shashi kumar uh, i will briefly quickly introduce him give a brief introduction of uh, the speaker and after that i will hand over the podium to the speaker and he will continue with the lecture so dr shishi kumar completed his uh, masters degree from patna university patna and he also has an other a master degree in geoinformatics from uh, indian institute of remote sensing and international institute for geo information science and earth observation netherlands he also he completed his phd from indian institute of technology rudki in 2019 since 2009 he is working as a scientist with indian institute of remote sensing with his which is with indian space research organization isro in india apart from being an active researcher he has also been actively involved in community building and has a lot of lectures on on available publicly in youtube on synthetic aperture radar and its application and other uh, analysis he is also a science team member for the nasa isro synthetic aperture radar the nisar mission and he has been awarded indian national geospatial award 2022 by indian society of remote sensing so with that i would invite dr shashi kumar to take over and present about uh, sar uh, processing and before handing over just a small announcement a uh, small request with to dr shashi uh, this particular session is being streamed live on youtube also so if you have any questions on the chat uh, please uh, read the question for the benefit of the audience on youtube because those chats are not visible in youtube okay okay so uh thank you dr okay. ojwal uh for the nice introduction and uh, now i am going to start my lecture on sar processing so uh in this lecture we are going to explore some concept of synthetic aperture radar images and its data processing uh synthetic aperture radar is a form of radar that is used to create images of objects such as landscape and uh, generally these images are the two dimensional and after processing three dimensional information could also be retrieved now the radar remote sensing is carried in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, this is a, a, a microwave remote sensing technique and synthetic aperture radar remote sensing is an imaging active microwave remote sensing technique which provides higher spatial resolution data set so from this uh, uh, statement it is clear that there are other uh, non imaging uh, as well as the passive micro remote sensing techniques are also available so this uh, remote sensing is uh, <coughs> sar remote sensing is going to provide the higher spatial resolution data set and uh, since this is an active remote sensing so this can provide the night vision capability also like the data set could be acquired in night time also if uh, you will see this image so the the lower image is representing the optical multi spectral data set view for san francisco so here this is true color composite image the objects are represented in their original color water is appearing in blue and uh, other color information is available so here we can see that in optical multi spectral data set uh, we are going to get the color information uh because uh, the visible range and the near infrared range of the electromagnetic spectrum is used to acquire the data set so uh, this particular uh, range particularly visible range is going to provide the color information so we are able to see the objects is their actual color but when we will see the sar data set sar data set is shown uh in the upper image so here what you are going to see here we are not, you are not going to get any color information because sar data set is not sensitive to the uh, the color information why because 
the range of the electromagnetic spectrum which is used in sound remote sensing in microwaves and microwaves are covering the 1 millimeter to 100 centimeter range of the electromagnetic spectrum and this range is not sensitive to the color information of the object but this will be sensitive to the structural and the electrical properties of the targeted objects so that you are going to get the information in bright and dark patches at gray scale level so here we are going to see the objects according to their uh, uh, the uh, the scattering behavior uh, for the uh, microwaves when the electromagnetic waves will hit microwaves will hit so the scattering property uh, will be received by uh, scattering amount will be received by the SAR sensor and finally the images will be generated so that the bright and dark patches are providing the uh, yeah, back scatter information based on uh, the scattering behavior from the individual targets. Now, when we are talking about the microwave bands, so there are different microwave bands. When we are starting from K band, so there will be K band, K band, KU band, X band, C band, S band, L band, and P band. Like uh, uh, starting from the shortest wavelength that is from the uh, for the k band we will have the longest wavelength range in the microwave that will be that will be p band so when you will see the wavelength ranges for k band this is 0 0.75 to 1.5 centimeter k band this will be 1.1 to 1.67 ku it will be 1.67 to 2.4 x band it will be 2.4 to 3.75 c band 3.75 to 7.5 S band 7.5 to 15 centimeter and 15 to 30 centimeter wavelength range is used for the L band and P band is having the longest wavelength range in microwave that is 30 to 100 centimeter. So what we are going to observe here when we are moving from K band to P band, there will be increase in wavelength and when we will see the frequency, so there will be the decrease in the frequency. So here. So it is obvious because uh, a multiplication of wavelength and frequency will be equal to the uh, velocity of the electromagnetic wave or velocity of the light. So <clears throat> when wavelength will be increasing, there will be decrease in the frequency. Now, one thing we will have to note that like where the uh, synthetic aperture dark sensors, which are launched in the different wavelength ranges or different bands, which are shown here, so one synthetic aperture radar sensor is generally launched to work with one frequency band. Like suppose a sensor is launched for C band. So for its entire time duration or its entire working duration, the sensor is going to provide the data set, SAR data set in C band only. If we require the data set of L band, so that time, one should order uh, or one should use the data set of another satellite to, which will be having the capability to acquire the data set in L band. Like if you will see, uh, 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 particularly when we are talking about the space bond synthetic aperture at our remote sensing. So generally we are starting from X band uh, because it will have a, a long wavelength range uh, uh, in comparison to the K band. So uh, uh, like for X band, uh, the very famous satellites are TerraSAR-X and Tandem-X. These two satellites were launched by German Space Agency. So these satellites are going to provide the uh, information of uh, the uh, 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 information in X band. Similarly, C band, so RI set one series, like RI set one and RI set one A, RI set one A is renamed as EOS 04. The, these two are the satellites from uh, ISRO India. And these satellites uh, are providing the data set in C band. Currently, RI, uh, EOS 04 is operational. So it is providing the data set in C band. Now, if I need the data set in L band, so there are other satellites like uh, ELOS Pulsar, that is the satellite of JAXA that is going to provide the data set in L band. There are other satellites also, but we are not going in very much detail of the satellite. So uh, 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 if one need the multi-frequency data set for one study area or for one city or one location, that time the data set should be ordered from multiple sensors.
because one sensor is going to provide the data set in one frequency range only. Now here we are going to uh, compare uh, the uh, uh, going to compare the uh, different uh, uh, remote sensing techniques like LIDAR, optical multispectral, and synthetic aperture radar. So if you will see the platforms, so for LIDAR, optical multispectral, and SAR, uh, uh, in all the remote sensing techniques, airborne and space-borne platforms could be used. Now, when we are talking about the radiation, so optical multispectral, is an example of passive remote sensing technique. It is highly dependent on, dependent on sun's illumination. So it is working with the concept of the reflection of the sun's illumination from the different uh, earth targets. So optical multispectral is going to uh, work uh, uh, in daytime because it, it is working with the reflected sunlight. Now, when we are talking about LIDAR and SA, these are examples of active remote sensing techniques which can generate their own radiation. So uh, uh, these sensors can work in day and night time also. They are not, it means that these sensors are not depending, LIDAR and SAR sensors, they are not depending on the uh, sun's illumination. Now, when we are talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, which portion of the electromagnetic spectrum is used in these remote sensing techniques? So in the case of LIDAR, infrared is used in optical multispectral, visible and infrared is used. And in the case of SAR, microwave portion of the electromagnetic spectrum is used. Now, when we're talking about the frequency, so LIDAR, uh, this is highly monochromatic. So single frequency is used in remote sensing. Now in optical multispectral, from the name, it is clear that multiple spectral, multi-spectral information will be there. Multiple spectra will be there. So the data set will be the multi-frequency. Generally, the, these frequencies are in blue band, green band, red band of the visible and the, infra, and the reflected infrared uh, portion, one to two bands of uh, reflected infrared portion is also uh, considered. Now, when we are coming to the SAR, so one SAR sensor is going to provide a data set in single frequency range only. But when we are using the multiple sensors, uh, which could provide the data set in different frequency ranges, so by utilizing the data set, one will have the multi-frequency data also. Now, there are uh, several other advantages of SAR remote sensing and SAR data over LIDAR and optical multispectral, these advantages are the polarimetry and interferometry. Like a uh, concept of polarimetry and interferometry in the laboratory, these were mainly given for the optical multispectral uh, lights, or you can say in the visible range. But uh, since when we are talking about the remote sensing, so the wavelength range which is used in optical multispectral and LIDAR this is a very small and there will be high possibility to get the disturbance due to the atmospheric dust particle. So uh, currently polarimetry and interferometry is not done and not possible in uh, LIDAR and optical multispectral, but due to the long wavelength ranges of synthetic aperture radar uh, sensors, uh, this is uh, uh, possible to implement the polarimetric phase and the, and the concept of interferometric phase to retrieve the biophysical information with the help of the SAR data set. Now, when we're talking about the acquisition time, so if you will see LIDAR sensor, so this is an active sensor, so this could be operated in day and night, both the times. Now, when we're talking about the optical multispectral, so optical multispectral sensor could be operated in uh, a daytime only because in the night time there will not be any uh, reflection from the uh, sunlight so these sensors uh, could not provide uh, useful information in night time now when we are coming to the sar so since this is an example of active sensor this can generate their own electromagnetic waves so this could be operated in day and night. So this will, the LIDAR and SAR both will have the night vision capability. Now, uh, if we are going to talk about the all weather operation capability, so LIDAR and optical multispectral, uh, they will have, they are operated in uh, 
in a small wavelength ranges like uh, visible and infrared. So this will be completely blocked by the cloud cover. So in the rainy time or in the cloud cover, it will be difficult to get any information of the earth surface from radar and optical multispectral sensors. But uh, since SAR sensor, this, the, the wavelength ranges are in centimeters, like uh, for uh, uh, C band, generally 5.5 .5 to 5.6 centimeter wavelength range is used. So, and of, uh, for S band, they generally 10 to 12 centimeter. For L band, generally 22 or 23 to 24 centimeter. So, these wavelength ranges are very large in comparison to the cloud particle size. So, they can easily penetrate the cloud cover and they can provide the ground information. Here I am going to show you an animation made by European Space Agency, which is going to show the, uh, uh, the SAR data acquisition. So here you can see that electromagnetic pulses are transmitted by the SAR sensor towards the earth surface. And here scattering is taking place based on the electrical and structural properties of the targeted objects. And even here, you can see that even in the cloudy and the haze condition, the SAR sensor can easily provide the data set of the earth surface. And here you can see that water bodies, since the surfaces are very smooth, because as we are knowing that microwaves are sensitive to the structural property and the electrical property. So the structural property, if you will see, so water is going to appear as a smooth surface. So all the transmission of electromagnetic waves from SAR will be reflected away from the direction of the sensor. There will be complete reflection because water body is going to appear as a smooth surface. So there will be very less back scattering that will be received by the sensor. So these features are going to appear dark because less back scatter information is received by the sensor. Now here is small patches you are going to see. So urban uh, areas or uh, residential cities, these are going to appear as very bright because when the electromagnetic waves are hitting these features, the hitting the uh, urban buildings, so there will be <coughs> uh, uh, very high back scatter information received by the sensor. So these are going to appear as very bright features. Like if the data set will be of very high spatial resolution, then you will be able to identify the individual buildings also. Now we are going to see the different modes of the data acquisition. So there are different modes, scansar mode, strip map mode, spotlight mode, and interferometric mode. So mainly we are going to talk about the scansar strip map mode and spotlight mode of data acquisition. Okay. And uh, here uh, this has been shown that uh, the, the modes of operation of radar imaging satellite one. So it was possible to operate in, uh, in uh, uh, scansar mode and uh, spotlight mode, uh, as well as FRS one mode was there for strip map mode. So in these modes, generally uh, most of the satellites could be operated in all the three modes. But in one time, the satellite could be operated in one specific mode. Now, when we are talking about the scansar mode, this is also known as the burst mode or wide swath mode. So the wide swath large coverage is achieved by periodically switching the antenna look angle. So here you can see that the antenna look angle is changed so that a large coverage uh, uh, or large swath could be covered. And uh, here uh, we, we can get the very large swath, but the resolution will become the coarser because uh, like uh, here since the coverage will be very large, so the particularly azimuth resolution will become very, very coarse. So <clears throat> scansar mode is used mainly for the uh, mapping and monitoring of the uh, large areas. So these are used in the monitoring of the maritime assets, detection of oil spills, flood mapping and sea ice and agriculture mapping, as well as for the forest mapping and monitoring. Now, this is one scene of the Terasar X data, which was acquired in, uh, in uh, scansar mode. And here you can see that in scansar mode, the coverage is, you can see that the scene size is 270 kilometer by 200 kilometer. Okay. So here you can see that in one scene, very large area could be covered. But here you can see that the spatial resolution 
is coarser. This became 40 meter spatial resolution. So <clears throat> the resolution will become coarser. So uh, identification of individual targets will become difficult, but one can easily identify and recognize the large areas. Now this is another data set. This is the medium uh, resolution scans are uh, MRS mode of RI set one data. So here uh, the resolution is approximately uh, 24 meter. And uh, now uh, here uh, you can see that the swath is 115 kilometer by 115 kilometer. So uh, th that much uh, swath uh, uh, could be covered in the in the uh, scans are mode. And here uh, you can see that this is the HH polarization of the SAR data set. So in this data set, uh, one can find the different information. So like here, one can easily see that uh, the river, this is the famous river Yamuna. So this uh, could be easily seen and another uh, river, the Holy River Ganga, this could also be seen here. So if one will be interested to do the mapping and monitoring, suppose any flood uh, 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 happened in this area. So you can see that in one scene, very, uh, the flood extent mapping for the very large area could be done because water is appearing as dark or the black feature, black linear feature here you can easily see. Now uh, <clears throat> the uh, city here, you can see that there is one city, Fatehpur city. So here this city could also be seen, this is appearing as very, very bright patch, okay, because there will be high scattering because when the electromagnetic waves will be transmitted by the sensor towards the, uh, the targeted object like buildings. So when the incident, uh, the electromagnetic wave, uh, the wave, when the electromagnetic wave will hit the target, scattering will take and high back scatter amount will be received by the sensor so that these kind of features are appearing very, very bright. Now the agricultural land and the and the vegetation covered area they are showing the moderate to dark scattering based on the scattering from these features. Now another mode of data acquisition is the strip map mode. So the strip map mode uh, is uh, performed generally by keeping a fixed off nadir angle here. Like in the previous case, we have seen that the angle was changing to cover the large area, large swath, but in the case of strip map mode, the look angle will be fixed. And uh, the when the imaging will be done for a particular time period, so uh, uh, the this uh, data will be appearing like a strip so that the name is given strip map mode. In strip map mode, we are going to get moderate resolution and moderate swath. Like this is the strip map mode uh, uh, false color composite data set uh, of the ELOS 2 Pulsar 2 that was acquired over Dehradun, Uttarakhand, India on 9th August 2015. So this data set was acquired in uh, strip map mode. And uh, the here this is uh, the color composite based on the scattering property this was shown. So here you can see that the vegetation covered area is highlighted in green color. Green color is basically showing here the volumetric scattering. Red color is showing the, red and pink color is showing the uh, double bounce scattering or the even bounce scattering, the scattering which is received from the urban settlements because high scattering is received and double bounce scattering is a natural phenomena which is received from the urban area. So this is scattering is received from there. And here you can see that dry river beds they are appearing in, in, uh, in dark color, okay, so a dark blue color. They are going to show the, uh, the uh, surface scattering or uh, odd bounce scattering. So uh, based on that, one can easily find the information of the different objects. So generally quad pole data set or the different uh, quad pole data set is the data set which will be having all the four polarimetric combinations the data set is acquired in, generally in strip map mode. Now, when we are coming to the spotlight mode, so now we have seen that in the two modes, scans are mode, it will have very large swath, but coarser resolution, coarser spatial resolution. In a strip map mode, moderate swath and the moderate uh, spatial resolution. 
now we are coming to the spotlight mode now uh, in spotlight mode sar sensor will be continuously looking towards one area like here you can see that this is an example of the uh, airborne SAR system so sar sensor is continuously moving so, sar sensor is somewhere placed uh, at the bottom of the aircraft so this is continuously looking, transmitting the electromagnetic pulses from all the positions to one particular location. So here what will happen, the azimuth resolution particularly will become very, very high, but swath will become very, very small. Swath will become approximately of five to 10 kilometer, but the resolution will become approximately of 25 centimeter to one meter. Now, in this slide, what we are going to see that the data set was acquired in spotlight mode. And here in the spotlight mode, we are able to see in this uh, uh, image, we are able to see the individual buildings and individual trees. So this information could be easily seen. And uh, uh, like these uh, uh, data sets are generally used for uh, the object identification or object tracking. So when one needs uh, uh, or one is working for the object detection or identification of the objects uh, uh, within a city or any other area, then that time one should prefer to use the spotlight mode data set. And if one is working to do the mapping and monitoring for a larger area, simple mapping and monitoring for the object uh, or the class identification for the bigger area identification, so that time they should go for the scansar mode data set because in, in single scene, one will be able to uh, uh, cover very large area. And suppose if uh, one is uh, working for the uh, um, bio and geophysical parameter retrieval by utilizing the concept of interaction of electromagnetic wave in different polarimetric combination, then that time one should prefer quad pole fully polarimetric SAR data set. Now, another which uh, we had not mentioned, that is the interferometric mode data set. So interferometric mode data set is simply uh, uh, acquired with the same SAR geometric configuration with same angle of incidence and in the same mode of acquisition. So interferometry could be done. We are not going in very much detail of interferometry because we are going to restrict ourselves to the uh, SAR data uh, uh, processing, uh, single SAR data processing. Now, uh, when uh, we are working with uh, any data set, so one should know that what extra information we can get from the SAR data set. So uh, here, uh, like uh, when we are doing the image interpretation, so generally uh, we are feeling better with the optical multispectral data set because optical multispectral data sets are acquired in the visible range and the, uh, and the near infrared range of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, since our eyes are working in visible range 0 0.4 micrometer to 0 0.7 micrometer, so any data which will be acquired in the visible range, that is going to appear very good for the visualization purpose, like this is list 4 data set. So in this, this is false color composite image. So in this image, this image is generated by considering infrared in, in red color, infrared channel in red color, and uh, red channel in, uh, in green color and uh, green channel in the blue color. That is the standard false color composite. Uh, now, <clears throat> since uh, if you will see the reflections from vegetation, so vegetation is going to have very high reflection, very high reflect, uh, reflectance in uh, infrared. So we represented infrared in the red color. So all the red color features which are visible here they uh, are, are the vegetation and somewhere somewhere like uh, uh, the forest ranges you are going to get the dark red color and the agricultural patches you are going to see in the pink color and water body this is going to appear as in <clears throat> in blue color and uh, this is the uh, city Rishi case near to the Dehradun so uh, here also uh, we are able to see that uh, uh, the city is appearing in the cyan color. Now, when the same area is imaged with uh, the uh, RI set one hybrid pole FCC data set, 
So when the same area was image, so what we are going to see that, okay, now this is also false color composite image because our data set is not sensitive to the color information. Okay, so with the help of the different uh, polarimetric channels, we provided each polarimetric combination in different colors so that we are able to generate some color composite. Okay, so in this color composite, we are able to see that, okay, some features are there. But when we are doing the image interpretation, so anyhow, this optical multispectral data set is appearing better because after doing the processing, both are having approximately a similar resolution near to five to six meter spatial resolution. Okay, they both are having the equal resolution. So uh, in the first view, the optical multispectral data set is appearing very better, very good for the uh, visualization purpose. But as uh, we are knowing that SAR data set is not sensitive to the color and SAR data set is used mainly for, to retrieve the structural property because this is sensitive to the structural and the electrical properties of the object. So this is uh, used to retrieve the, uh, the structural information of the targeted objects. So now I took a subset uh, from both the data sets. So uh, this uh, uh, subset was taken uh, for this area. This area, one band was taken. Uh, now one band of uh, the one band of the list four data set and one uh, polarization of the ri set one these were uh, these were taken so ri set one was uh, the, the this data set frs1 mode is hybrid pole mode data set this which uh, the uh, uh, like dual pole data so uh, in the dual pole data set one polarization is used here now uh, here what you are going to see just uh, see the in circuit area so this is pashu log barrage okay now this barrage is not visible in the in the uh, in the optical multispectral data set in the one band of this uh, data set. Why? Because the color of the barrage is uh, completely merged with the background water, so this is not visible. But if you will see the structure of the barrage, uh, is entirely different than the than the then the uh, structure of the water body as well as the electrical properties will also be different. So uh, we are going to get a clear uh, uh, information of, uh, uh, just excuse me for one minute. Yes, uh, so this barrage is uh, are not visible in the list four data set because the color information of the barrage, color of the barrage is completely merged with the background water. But in the uh, SAR data set, in the C band SAR data set of RI set one, since the electromagnetic wave transmitted electromagnetic waves are interacting with the uh, structure of the barrage. So we are going to get the high scattering for, because uh, the, the structure of the barrage, barrage will be made of the iron bars and concrete material. So they are going to contribute in very, very high scattering. So this is completely identified as, uh, 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 that is clearly identified in the RI set one data set, which was not visible in the optical multispectral data set. Now, uh, the, the uh, uh, another advantage we are going to see the uh, another area uh, we are now focusing on this portion, lower portion of the image. So in the lower portion of the image, if you will see, like uh, there is another barrage and that barrage is also not visible in the one, the, the, uh, one band of the optical multispectral data set, but due to the uh, interaction of the electromagnetic wave microwaves with the structure of the barrage, uh, we are able to clearly identify those features in uh, the SAR data set. Now, <clears throat> we are going to see the sensitivity of the microwaves uh, of the SAR data set uh, for the terrain topography. 
So in optical multispectral data set, uh, this is mainly sensitive to the top color information of the object. It will have the very less sensitivity towards the targeted objects, uh, or, or less sensitivity towards the topography of the targeted parent. So here you can see that some topographic information is there, but the complete topographic information could not be seen. But in the same area, when this was imaged with the help of the synthetic aperture radar data set, so here you can see that the topographic information is present and one will be able to get the complete information of the terrain topography. Like if you see this river at the undulating terrain and undulation in the terrain and the river, so this is not visible in the optical, clearly visible in the optical multispectral data set, but it is clearly visible in the SAR data set. Similarly, if you will see the topography of the hilly terrain, so here also, if you will see the complete variation in the topography could be easily seen, which is not visible in the optical multispectral data set. Similarly, in the left side image also, you can see the similar information like uh, enhanced uh, topographic terrain topography is uh, highlighted in the SAR data set. So the two uh, advantages we had seen in the feature identification. Another advantage of SAR data set is penetration capability. So here SAR data set, if you will see SAR data set is going to penetrate the uh, soil and it is going to provide the subsurface information. Just focus on the middle strip when the data set was acquired by the optical multispectra. So we are going to see the golden color of the sand, sand. There is no undulation or no variation. But when the same area was imaged with the help of the synthetic aperture radar sensor that was SAR-A, shuttle imaging radar A in L band. So it penetrated the top uh, sand surface and it interacted with the subsurface and it provided the paleo channel information. So it is saying that the, the Sahara desert, which is currently desert, this was not desert in the past. Okay, because uh, the paleo channel are saying that in past, long, uh, uh, like uh, several hundred years ago, uh, 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 there was a river channel and, uh, and water information was also there. So these kind of information could be read. Now, another advantage which we are going to talk, that is the penetration capability through cloud. So here you can see that this is the one area near to the city Varanasi. So this is again the false color composite image of uh, Sentinel 2B uh, data. So here your vegetation is appearing in the red color. Now in the cloud cover, due to the cloud cover on 15th January 2021, we are, we are not able to get any information of uh, this area. Here you can see that cloud cover is there and no ground information is available. Now, but when the, for the same date, when the Sentinel-1 data was uh, acquired, uh, so for that day, you can see that, you can see that uh, it can easily penetrate through the cloud cover and it is providing the ground information. So this uh, cloud penetration capability is an added advantage of the SAR data sets. Now we are going to see the SAR geometry because when we are going to process the SAR data set, so geometry is going to play a very important role because some geometrical parameters are also used in processing the SAR data set. So uh, first we are going to see the, uh, this is an airborne sensor. So the SAR sensor is placed somewhere here and it is transmitting the electromagnetic pulses uh, in a direction. So the di direction in which SAR sensor is transmitting electromagnetic pulses, that direction is known as a range direction. And the direction in which SAR sensor is moving in forward direction, that is known as the azimuth direction. So the flight direction will be the azimuth direction and the direction in which electromagnetic waves will be transmitted, that will be the range direction. So there will be two directions, range direction and azimuth direction, okay. Now, when uh, the electromagnetic waves will be transmitted by maintaining some angle, so this angle, which is not highlighted here, this is known as the look angle. And when the electromagnetic waves will incident uh, at a particular point, so uh, when you will draw a, a normal to that uh, surface, so the 
angle between the normal and the incident electromagnetic wave will be the angle of incidence. Okay, so this angle of incidence is going to play very high importance when we are going to process the data set to retrieve the backscatter information. Now, all the SAR sensors are side looking radar sensors. They are not nadi looking. Nadi looking, nadi is the vertical direction. They are not going to transmit electromagnetic pulses vertically. Otherwise, what will happen? There will not be any uh, differentiation in the range direction. So there, there must be uh, separate uh, pulses received uh, in the range direction so that the SAR sensor will be operated in the imaging mode. So uh, uh, here, all the SAR sensors are the uh, side looking radar sensors. They will transmit the electromagnetic pulses either left side or the right side. Now in the next slide, we are going to see the complete diagram of the radar geometry. So the flight direction is the ASMO direction, the direction either left side or right side, the direction in which our sensor is transmitting the electromagnetic pulses, that will be the range direction. Now the area which will be illuminated by the SAR sensor, as here, if you'll see in this, uh, in this uh, uh, image, the area is in between near range and far range, okay? Because all the SAR sensors are side looking radar sensors, they will transmit electromagnetic pulses either in left side or right side. So what will happen? It will illuminate an area. Now, the illuminated portion, which will be appearing near to the nadir, will be known as near range and the farthest point from the nadir will be known as far range okay so uh, the uh, the total swatch will be between near to far range so images will be generated between near to far range now the uh, here you can see that uh, the angle by which our sensor is transmitting electromagnetic pulses that angle is known as the look angle and 90 degree minus look angle will be known as the depression angle and uh, if this is airborne sensor, if this is airborne sensor, so at that time when you will see that angle of incidence, angle of incidence will be exactly equal to the look angle. Angle of incidence that is represented by theta and for the near range will be exactly equal to the other alpha n. Okay. But uh, uh, when uh, uh, the uh, uh, but uh, when you will see that uh, the angle of incidence in the far range, that will be different than the uh, near range because the angle of incidence is going from uh, uh, going to vary from near range to the far range. Okay. So now, uh, in the case of airborne sensors, since the altitude is altitude is very is very low, so that time look angle will be exactly equal to the the angle of incidence but this is not the case of the space bound SAR sensors in the case of space bound SAR sensors uh, 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 the angle of incidence is retrieved uh, by uh, uh, doing this calculation re plus rh divided by re multiplied by sine alpha so when i when we are going to take the sine inverse of uh, this relation so we are going to get the actual angle of incidence for each and every resolution cell. Now where RE is representing the curvature of the earth, H is representing the altitude that will be 400 to 800 kilometer. Okay, altitude of the altitude of the sensor and alpha is going to represent the look angle. Okay, so uh, here you can see that uh, with the help of that one will be able to calculate angle of incidence in the near range. If uh, the swath is the swath is represented here in the yellow color, so here the for the uh, from near to far range, the this calculation is used to calculate the angle of incidence. Now, as we have seen that uh, there are two resolutions within single SAR resolution cell. Okay, azimuth resolution. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, we have seen that there are two directions. Uh, for a SAR sensor that the, those directions were azimuth direction and the range direction. Due to these two uh, different directions, there will be two different resolutions within single SAR resolution cell. Like if you'll see in the case of optical multispectral data set or any other data set, there will be only one spatial resolution. 
But in the case of SAR, due to two different uh, directions, there are two different uh, resolutions within a single resolution cell. So azimuth resolution and range resolution. Azimuth resolution describes the capability of the sensor to separate two closely spaced objects in a forward direction. And range resolution is the capability of the sensor to distinguish two closely spaced objects in the range direction. Okay, so uh, uh, here we are going to see the diagram for the synthetic aperture radar, uh, as well as uh, as well as the azimuth and the range resolution. So here you can see that the pink color line is representing suppose this square the uh, so this uh, this will not be square maybe because the resolutions are different. So uh, this uh, box is representing. Uh, the uh, resolution cell. Okay, resolution cell is the smallest unit of the sensor. Beyond that, sensor could not uh, detect any object. Okay, so if the object side will be greater than the resolution, then only uh, objects will be detected as uh, as uh, as uh, individual target. If the two objects, if they are separated uh, uh, with a distance less than the less than the specified resolution. Then both the objects will be detected as the single object. They will not be distinguished as two separate objects. Okay. So here you can see that azimuth resolution and resolution both are different. The uh, azimuth resolution is the length of the resolution cell in forward direction or azimuth direction, and range resolution is the resolution cell in the uh, length of the resolution cell in the in the range direction. Now azimuth resolution is going to depend on the antenna size. Here you can see that. Uh, longer the antenna size, higher will be the spatial resolution. Okay, and it is also depending on the other factors like R naught and lambda, where R naught is the range distance, that is the distance from sensor to the target. So R naught and lambda is the wavelength which is used to do uh, the uh, which is used to operate the uh, SAR sensor. Now here you can see that suppose this is a point target, and the SAR sensor is starting to, uh, is going to get the first backscatter response of this point target from this position in the space. Now suppose it is going to track, it is going to transmit the uh, electromagnetic pulses and going to receive the backscatter information from different positions. And suppose this is the mid position. This is the like this is the position with the with the with the minimum distance, uh, and after that again, uh, suppose this is the last point. After that, no backscatter response will be received by the sensor. So this one will be suppose point T one, first time, and this is the last time that is represented by T n. So the SAR sensor is going to receive the electromagnetic response of the electromagnetic pulses from first point to the last point. Now the actual length of the antenna is this LA, this small antenna size is small LA. But when this uh, will be operated from the time T1 to Tn to get the, uh, the backscatter information of the targeted object from time T1 to Tn, so the backscatter responses will be collected from different positions uh, from time T1 to Tn. So when the total distance, the response of the total distance will be merged, then this total distance, the, the distance tabled by the SAR sensor, radar sensor to track this target uh, will behave like as a virtual antenna so that the name is given the synthetic aperture. So the here you can see that the antenna size is synthesized virtually with uh, the actually small antenna. So actual ant antenna size is small and a large synthetic aperture or virtual antenna is created by merging the backscatter responses from the different spatial position so that uh, the large antenna will be there. And when the large antenna value of the several kilometers will be placed here, so uh, we are going to get the very high spatial azimuth resolution because in the space, uh, it will not be possible to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, maintain a large, very large antenna size of uh, several hundred meters, uh, several hundred meters or several uh, kilometers. 
due to the gravity of the earth and due to the several other factors so that uh, the 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 space the velocity of the aircraft or spacecraft is utilized to synthesize a large antenna from actual small antenna and when this is synthesized a larger uh, antenna size so this is going to give you a very high spatial resolution because r not and lambda this will be fixed now another resolution is the range resolution that is going to depend on the pulse width so c tau divided by 2 so where tau is the pulse width and see the speed of light so here you can see that when uh, uh, for the when the tau is 1 microsecond so when it will multiply it with the speed of light so c tau will become 300 meter and when it will divide by 2 so it will become 150 meter now here you can see that the distance between the two uh, objects this distance is 100 meter and this is less than the less than the uh, the range resolution that is 150 meter so that what you are going to get that when the electromagnetic pulses transmitted electromagnetic pulses are interacting with the objects so there is uh, uh, no delay uh, uh, and finally both will be identified as single target now when the same pulses were transmitted towards these objects when they were separated by a distance 200 meter so here you can see that there are two separate uh, pulses or two separate echoes received by the sensor so both will be identified as two separate objects so uh, azimuth resolution and range resolution both the resolutions are depending on depending on another factors or or, or separate factors now we are going to uh, talk about the radar polarization so in uh, synthetic aperture radar imaging polarized electromagnetic waves are used because unpolarized energy vibrate in all the possible directions that will be perpendicular to the direction of propagation of electromagnetic wave so that uh, imaging will become difficult so that the polarized electromagnetic waves are transmitted mainly here polarization will be there of the electric field vector because in an electromagnetic uh, uh, wave there will be uh, one electric field vector one magnetic field vector both will be perpendicular to each other and mutually perpendicular to the direction of propagation of electromagnetic wave so uh, here in the case of uh, synthetic aperture radar imaging only electric field vector is used to do the imaging because uh, the all the objects appearing on the earth's uh, earth uh, uh, surface they will have very less sensitivity towards the magnetic field and very high sensitivity towards electric field so that it will be possible to get the high return of the electric field vector and finally the if the high intensity will be received so that images could be generated now there are maximum four polar metric combinations possible with the nsr data set and these combinations are hh hv vh and vv hh is representing transmission of horizontally polarized electromagnetic wave and at the time of receiving horizontally polarized waves are received and hv is representing transmission of horizontal polarization and receiving of the vertical polarization now similarly in the case of vh vertically polarized electromagnetic waves were transmitted and horizontally polarized electromagnetic waves were received in the case of vv vertically polarized electromagnetic waves were transmitted and vertically polarized electromagnetic waves were received now uh, when the electromagnetic waves are transmitted so uh, uh, like uh, with when the suppose horizontal polarized horizontal polarization uh, uh, is transmitted so when the horizontally polarized electromagnetic waves are transmitted and when it will hit the target so what will happen so due to the structure of the target it might be possible that the polarization will be broken but since the Uh, incoming radiation was in horizontal polarization so maximum energy will be vibrating after scattering it will be vibrating in horizontal direction also but some a portion of the electromagnetic wave will start vibrating in vertical direction as well as some portion may be unpolarized so at the time of receiving the sensor can receive alternatively both the polarization either it can uh, uh, it can receive horizontal polarization so that the combination will become hh and it can also receive the vertical polarization from the same transmitter horizontal polarization so the combination will become hv now similarly in the case of uh, vv and vh vertically polarized electromagnetic waves were transmitted and when after interaction 
again the scattered wave will start vibrating in both the polarization, horizontal and vertical, and both will be received by the sensor so that the another combination VV and VH will be generated. So uh, by maintaining the, uh, the polarization phase difference, uh, uh, the, uh, the, all, all the four uh, polarimetric channels are acquired uh, uh, for any area for the same time period. So at that time, the data set will be known as the quad pole data set. If any SAR sensor is going to provide the data set in one polarimetric combination, anyone, like out of four polarimetric combinations, HH, HV, VH, and VV, if any one combination will be received, then that, that, then that data set will be known as single polarized data set. If out of four polarimetric combinations, like HH, HV, VH, and VV, any satellite is providing the two polarimetric combinations, like HH plus HV, or VV plus VH, or HH plus VV, then that data set will be known as 12 pole data set. And if all the four polarimetric combinations will be acquired and provided by the satellite for the same study area at the same time, so that data set will be known as fully polarimetric quad pole data set. Now, when the data set will be acquired by a SAR sensor, so this data set will be a completely raw data set. Okay. So here, what you are going to see that. This is a completely raw data set, which is, which is acquired by the SAR sensor. So here you can see that the information, uh, 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 the, the raw data set contains basically the SAR signals, which are uh, scattered or reflected by the single point targets. And the, uh, the signals from the point target will be distributed in ASMO direction as well as range direction. It means that the information of one point target will be distributed along azimuth and range direction, so that uh, a complete image could not be done, uh, could not be uh, 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 like object information could not be visualized in the raw data set. Like here, you can see that in the raw data set, uh, the information is distributed along azimuth direction as well as the range direction. So there will be requirement of the focusing of the data set or the compression of the data set in, the, in these two directions, in azimuth direction, as well as in the range direction. Okay, so uh, uh, there will be data uh, focusing or data compression in the uh, range direction, as well as in the azimuth direction to get an image. So uh, we are going to see what steps are used for the SAR focusing. So uh, first a raw data will be ingested. So a raw data set will be a series of the complex numbers. Complex numbers will be generally represented by I and Q, where I is representing in phase uh, or real channel and Q is representing quadrature or imaginary channel. And that are sampled at the instrument and recorded at the ground station. So here you can see that the raw data set will be acquired in the time domain. Now then it will be converted from time domain to the frequency domain. So fast Fourier transform will be implemented to convert the data set from time domain to the frequency, uh, frequency domain. And this raw data set has the same information as the one in the time domain. But now it will be converted to the frequency domain. Now from the metadata, a range reference function will be built. A range reference function will be series of the complex numbers, okay. And uh, after that, uh, the data will be compressed by doing the complex multiplication. So uh, the, each element of the raw data in frequency domain will be multiplied with the complex conjugate of the corresponding element in the, of the range reference function, okay, in the frequency domain. So what will happen? Uh, the, the data will be uh, compressed or focused in the, in, the, in the range direction. Now, after that, now, again, after compression also, the data is a range compressed, but still it is in the frequency domain. So inverse fast Fourier transform will be implemented to convert the data set from frequency domain to time domain. Now, this data set is said to be compressed because all the signal returns from a single target are compressed in a single area. So now the data set is compressed uh, or, or, or focused in the range direction but still it will be distributed in the, in the ASMO direction. 
So due to that distribution, again, here you can see that no information could be visualized because if you see the, the data set, so, okay, some more information, some uh, very minor uh, enhancement is there, but that is uh, not uh, uh, enough to uh, acquire, uh, acquire the fruitful information from the scene. But from our image interpretation skill, from visualizing the data set, we can say that now this is a water body because water is going to have, this is a large water body because water is going to have a, a smooth scattering or a specular reflection and a very less scattering will be received by the sensor, less, very less back scatter information will be received by the sensor. So this is going to appear as very, very smooth surface. Um, when we will compare with uh, this point, uh, the raw data and the range compressed data set. So here you can see that uh, like in the, uh, in the raw data set, uh, no information was uh, visualized for the individual target, but at least some information, some better information is there in the range compressed data set. Okay. So the water body is uh, more clear delineated from the land mass. So here we can see that. Okay. But uh, again, uh, this data set, uh, range compressed data set is not sufficient to get the fruitful information. So there will be requirement to compress the data set in ASMO direction. So uh, uh, the, the, when the data set will focus in ASMO direction, so we will be able to uh, find the fruitful information. So now uh, here you can see that uh, this is the flow diagram to compress the data set in uh, data set in uh, azimuth direction. So azimuth reference function in time domain will be there. And uh, again, it will be converted to the frequency domain by mistake it is written time domain only. Okay. And uh, range compressed data set in time domain will be given as input. That will be known as the azimuth data set in the time domain. And uh, here this will be converted uh, 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 from time domain to the frequency domain. And here range cell migrated data in time domain will be there. It will be converted to the frequency domain, and again, it will be multiplied with the uh, the complex conjugate of the azimuth reference function. Uh, so finally, the data set will be converted into uh, the compressed data set in the azimuth domain. Uh, sorry, azimuth direction. And uh, uh, when the inverse fast Fourier transform will be implemented, the data set will be converted from frequency domain to time domain. So, uh, uh, so uh, the fast Fourier transform will be implemented to convert the data set from time domain to frequency domain. Now, uh, some of the power uh, you want to compress is in the completely different column of the data set. Range cell migration realigns all the returns for a single target into an appropriate single line of data in preparation for the azimuth compression. Now, the azimuth reference function will be built with the help of the metadata. And that will be again series of the complex number. And when the, this will be multiplied, the, the, the complex values uh, of, uh, the, of the, uh, 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 the, uh, the uh, data set will be multiplied with the range reference function, so, sorry, azimuth reference function. So, so th th that will be become the, th that is going to give the data set, uh, that will be the azimuth compressed data set in frequency domain. And again, when the inverse fast Fourier transform will be uh, implemented, so again, the data set will be converted from frequency domain to time domain, because here the data set will be recorded, uh, 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 signals were uh, uh, received for, uh, the, for the different time periods. Now, when the data set, data set is uh, acquired, uh, uh, sorry, data set is compressed in the azimuth, uh, azimuth direction. So after azimuth compression, so here you can see that, uh, you can see that, uh, the clear information of the different targets like water body and other objects, land and uh, undulation in the terrain that could be easily visualized, okay, in the in the compressed data set. But one can always think about the accurate Doppler centroid because uh, the Doppler centroid uh, should be precisely measured. If there will be any accuracy in measuring the Doppler centroid, then uh, that uh, that may affect the uh, or that may deteriorate the quality of the image. So nowadays, uh, all the uh, like SAR processors, uh, they are having the capability to find out the actual uh, the Doppler centroid, uh, and uh, uh, by measuring that Doppler centroid, the data set will be uh, compressed in the azimuth direction. 
Now here you can see that uh, the, the SLC image was generated with the wrong Doppler parameter. So since this data set is of radar set one, which is already coarser resolution data set, but uh, here we are able to see that, okay, uh, like here, uh, this is the, uh, uh, this is the, sun, the data set of the San Francisco area. See when data set of the San Francisco city. So here we can see that uh, there is no clear cut uh, visualization of this bridge. But here, if you see that uh, when uh, the SLC image was generated with the correct Doppler parameter, so here you can see that clear information of all the objects could be seen here. Now uh, we have uh, seen that all the SAR sensors are side looking radar sensors. So, so uh, SAR sensors are moving in azimuth direction, that is the direction of the flight, and they're transmitting the electromagnetic pulses in the range direction. So suppose the ground targets are represented by the points A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So the swath of the data set from A to G, uh, A to H. And now what you are going to see that A is the near range and H is coming towards the far end, I is also there. So what you are going to see that, okay, this is the graphical representation of the same data set in the uh, 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 graphical representation of the ground targets in the SAR data set. So what we are going to see, uh, we are seeing that there is no compression in azimuth direction, but the data set which is appearing in the range direction, there is compression and particularly compression is very high for those objects which are there in the near range. So when we are going to process the data set, so generally first step, what we are going to do, that is the slant to ground range conversion because there is a requirement to get the actual information. So when we are, when the actual information will be retrieved, so what will happen? The data set uh, will be converted to the ground range. Since there is uh, no compression in azimuth direction, so there is no need to do any kind of operation in the, in the azimuth direction. Okay, but since uh, here you can see that due to two different resolutions, the shape of the resolution cell become a rectangular. Okay, so uh, we are going, we will have to implement one more operation. Uh, that operation will be of multi-looking so that uh, the data set could be generated with square pixel shape. Now, this is the uh, complex SAR data set because uh, all the SAR data sets, they are going to have amplitude and the phase information for each and every resolution cell. So to represent, to get the actual phase information, phase of the electromagnetic wave at the time of it hitting the target, as well as the amplitude, the, the, the uh, data set is represented in the complex number. Okay, the real number is the first one that is suppose uh, this is the value for one resolution cell for one pixel. The value is 0 0.587161. Uh, to here you can see that uh, the, uh, this is the real channel value and the imaginary value is 0 0.356255. So uh, the SAR data set is uh, represented in the complex number and this is the radar set two data set. And uh, this is the SLC format data set. The data SLC means single loop complex data set for the San Francisco area and the polarization is HH. Now in this image, one can easily see that buildings are appearing in very bright color. Okay. And uh, the, the uh, water is going to show the, uh, uh, the uh, water is represented in the dark color due to the smooth scattering and uh, less scattering is received from the vegetation. So vegetation will be showing low to moderate scattering. Okay. Now uh, we are going to uh, uh, talk about the data processing to generate an amplitude image from the SLC data set. Because in the, in the previous uh, slide, you have seen that this is the single loop complex data set. In the single loop complex data set, each and every resolution cell will be represented by the complex number. One will be the real channel, another will be the imaginary channel. Okay, so both the values will be there for each and every resolution cell. And uh, we are going to uh, 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 generate the amplitude image from this, uh, uh, from these values. So the amplitude uh, data set will be the square root of square of the real component plus square of the imaginary component because several people, they are preferring to use the amplitude or intensity data set for the image visualization. 
Okay. So amplitude data set, uh, you can see uh, the amplitude data set here. So uh, uh, the amplitude data set, the formula to generate the amplitude data set is shown here. And uh, now similarly, if you will see the intensity or the power, so intensity or the power uh, will be the square of the amplitude. So uh, that would also be generated. Power image or intensity image will be generated by taking the square of the amplitude image. So amp uh, amplitude data will be generated. And after that, uh, the power data set could also be generated. Okay. Now, uh, as we have seen that there is slant range ambiguity in the SAR data set because SAR data sets are transmitting electromagnetic pulses towards the range direction. So there will be slant range ambiguity. And uh, in the first step, uh, we are going to remove that ambiguity because due to slant range distortions, object in the near range, they are going to appear compressed related to the far range. So to get the actual ground range information, we are going to uh, do the slant to ground range conversion. Now, when we will do the slant to ground range conversion, so as we are knowing that there are two resolutions in the resolution cell, azimuth resolution and range resolution. Now, both the resolutions will become different. So the shape of the rectangular, uh, the shape of the resolution cell of the SAR data set will become rectangular. And generally in image processing, we are preferring to use the the square shape of the uh, uh, square shape of the resolution cells. So uh, we will generate the square uh, uh, pixels or square resolution cells uh, by doing the multi uh, look operation. Okay, so multi looking will be performed to generate the square pixels. So this is the step to generate uh, the uh, to generate the uh, ground range uh, uh, image uh, or to uh, convert the uh, range resolution slant range resolution to the ground range resolution. So the formula is very simple. So in the first step, what uh, we are going to do uh, the range resolution because there will not be any compression in azimuth resolution. So there is no uh, need to disturb the azimuth resolution. So only we are going to minimize the, uh, the distortion in the range direction. So pixel spacing in range direction will be multiplied with the sign of look angle. And uh, uh, when the sign of look angle will be multiplied, then uh, the data set will be converted to the ground. Range. Okay, now suppose what is happening when the pixel spacing in range direction is four meter. One example is given here. If the pixel spacing in range direction is four meter, and the pixel spacing in ASMO direction is six meter and look angle is 30 degree. So uh, 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 as we have discussed that, we will have to minimize the slant range ambiguity for this particular resolution cell or for this particular pixel. So what we will have to do, we are going to, uh, 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 we are going to convert the data set from slant range to ground range. So we are going to multiply it with one divided by sine of angle of incidence or the look angle. So four meter multiplied by sine 30, so it will become eight meter. Now here you can see that, that the pixel uh, 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 spacing or the pixel size in ASMO direction is six meter and the pixel size in the ground range, uh, the direction is eight meter. So what will happen? The pixel will become the rectangular. Now at that time, what we will have to do, we will have to find out the optimal factors or the number of pixels in range and uh, ASMO direction so that we can create the a bigger pixel. So here you can see that if you will take the three pixel in uh, in range direction and uh, four pixel in ASMO direction, so we can create uh, uh, a 24 meter by 24 meter uh, square pixel size. That is going to reduce the spatial resolution but there will the, but there will be enhancement in the radiometric property for the uh, for the visualization of the object. Like in the case of RRC two data set, here you can see that this is the single look complex data set. Before uh, doing the slant to ground range uh, uh, ambiguity removal and before doing the multi looking, so here this is appearing like a strip, one strip, and the information is stretched. And, uh, uh, and uh, here you can see that the information in range direction is compressed. 
but uh, like uh, here, but uh, if you will have the Allos Pulsar data set or any other satellite data set, so it might be possible that the compression will also be uh, uh, very, very high. So that the data set will be appearing, a very thin, appearing in a very thin strip. So at that time, one will have to find out the appropriate, uh, appropriate uh, factors. Uh, those factors will be calculated based on the uh, spatial resolution, and that will be calculated with the help of the angle of incidence or the look angle information. Okay. So now uh, here you can see that uh, by taking the appropriate uh, uh, number of looks two uh, in ASMO direction and number of looks one in the range direction, this image is generated. This is the multi-looked image, which will which is free from slant to ground range ambiguity, and uh, square pixels are also generated. So, and here one can easily see that there is enhancement in the radiometric property of the targeted object. So we can clearly distinguish different features. Now, a SAR data set generally suffers from a speckle. So a speckle is unwanted noise that is coming due to the, uh, that is appearing in the image due to the constructive and destructive interference of the return signals, okay. So the complete definition I have written here, so one can go through this definition. We are going to see that uh, uh, what will be the effect of the speckle filtering. So generally, uh, it is difficult to identify the speckle uh, in the urban area because uh, uh, speckle may give, uh, due to the uh, constructive interference, this will give the brightness and due to the destructive interference, this will give the darkness. So identification of darkness is uh, darkness is difficult and it is not going to affect this the image uh, at large extent. But uh, the unwanted bright pixels uh, uh, or unwanted bright signals, the, those uh, uh, are coming due to the constructive interference of the return signals. They are going to affect the visualization. We will not be able to clearly visualize the objects. So. <clears throat> So there are uh, several speckle filters. Generally, uh, 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 they are the low, uh, uh, low pass filter. They are going to allow the low energy and they are going to suppress the, suppress the uh, high intensity values uh, by doing the smoothening. So low pass will be allowed. Uh, so, but uh, some adaptive, adaptive filtering approaches are also utilized. Uh, uh, there are several algorithms developed. Few algorithms are developed on the adaptive, but most of them are developed uh, with the concept of the uh, low pass filtering approach. So now here you can see that uh, uh, this is the data set intensity image before speckle filtering, and this is the intensity image uh, after speckle filtering. So now here you can see that there is enhancement in the radiometric property of the SAR data set. Uh, speckle is minimized. Here in this data set, speckle was already less. So we are not going to see the clear information of the speckle, but in several scenes or, or high spatial resolution spotlight data set, you are going to get the high amount of speckle. So there you can uh, clearly see the spec, uh, effect of the speckle filter. Now, after that, uh, we are going to do the radiometric calibration. Radiometric calibration will, will be the first scientific product of uh, any SAR data set. Uh, any SAR data set for uh, to do any kind of uh, any kind of science uh, 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 with respect to the thematic applications. Okay, so the objective of SAR calibration is to provide imagery in which the pixel values can be directly related to the radar back scatter of the scene, because the radar back scatter from a known shape or known target like trihedral or dihedral corner reflectors that is known, and we can easily measure those values. But when we are coming to the earth surface, so there are different type of objects and their shape and sizes are irregular. So we cannot uh, understand that what should be the uh, uh, radar return. So radiometric calibration operation is performed so that one will be able to clearly understand how much radar return will be there from different uh, uh, categories of the objects. Now, uh, generally when we are performing, when we are doing the SAR data processing, so it is necessary to apply the radiometric correction to SAR images, so that the pixel values of the SAR images truly represent the radar back scatter of the reflecting surface. Now, generally there are three uh, uh, back scatter coefficients, and these back scatter coefficients are listed and named here, sigma naught, beta naught, and gamma naught. 
Now, sigma naught is the widely used uh, 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 back scatter coefficient by the scientific community. Okay, the, uh, because uh, 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 it is uh, correlated directly with the with the with the return signal, but other back scatter coefficient like beta naught and gamma naught are also used. The back scatter coefficient, the sigma naught back scatter coefficient, is the conventional measure of the strength of the radar signal reflected by the distributed scatter. So when it will be the linear scale, the values will be ranging from zero to one, but it is usually expressed in dB so that the, that the values will be changed uh, will be changed from uh, positive to the negative. So the values will be represented in uh, minus twelve, minus thirteen, minus twenty, like that. Uh, it is a normalized dimensionless number which compares the strength observed to that expected from an area of one square meter. Now, beta naught uh, uh, is also uh, a similar kind of measurement. Uh, it is also going to show the radar brightness. And uh, this is also measure the reflectivity per unit area in the slant range. Now, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the angle of incidence is used in the sigma naught, sign of angle of incidence is used in the sigma naught, and in the beta naught, uh, it is not used. So when the beta naught will be multiplied with sign of angle of incidence, it is going to be the sigma naught image. Now, gamma naught image is the back scatter coefficient normalized by the cosine of the incidence angle. So when the sigma naught will be uh, multiplied by one divided by cosine, then uh, that is going to give the uh, uh, gamma naught image. Now, this is the back scatter coefficient image generation uh, for uh, Terasar X image. So first beta naught image is uh, generated. So beta naught, uh, the formula will be provided by uh, the space agencies because calibration, radiometric calibration formula is provided by the space agencies because this is the responsibility of the space agencies. Before providing the data set uh, to the users, the, the, uh, the data set uh, will be well calibrated and the calibration constants values will be provided for the radiometric calibration. So first here, the beta naught will be calculated. That will be equals to Ks multiplied by dn square. Here, dn square is the your amplitude value. The amplitude value, which we have seen that this is calculated with the help of i square plus q square. OK. Now, the beta naught could be represented at dB scale. So this will be 10 log base 10. With dB scale is basically 10 log base 10. So when we will do the beta naught, so we will be able to calculate the values. Now, case is the calibration factor, and it will be retrieved from the metadata, and the values will be uh, uh, given for uh, the sensor, and uh, the different values will be there for the different sensor. Calibration constant, different calibration constant values will be there for the different sensor. Now here, as we are knowing that I and Q are the real channel and the imaginary parts of the back scatter complex signal. Now, when this back uh, scatter coefficient beta naught will be multiplied with uh, with a sign of uh, uh, local incidence angle or theta local, then that is going to give the radar cross section or normalized radar cross section that is known as the sigma naught. Okay, and the sigma naught at dB scale that is the 10 log base 10 that could also be uh, calculated by uh, implementing the 10 log base 10 to uh, this value. Now the radar cross section measurement, the this calibration constant, the value, the calibration factor, this is measured by the space agencies by putting the active and the passive reflectors. So generally, uh, active uh, reflectors are also placed, but uh, the passive reflectors like the corner reflectors, they are placed in the field to uh, derive the corner reflector values. Why? Because the corner reflectors uh, will have the definite shape and according to their values, like uh, uh, length and width uh, of the panels, one will be able to clearly find out the maximum radar cross section or maximum return for the particular wavelength. Like if this, we are talking about the trihedral uh, corner reflector. So in this case, suppose the formula is four pi L to the power four divided by three lambda square. So this will be depending on the, the total radar cross section from this uh, panel will be uh, or from this corner reflector will be uh, depending on the uh, length of the length uh, side length of the corner reflector and the wavelength which is uh, transmitted by the 
SAR sensor or the SAR sensor or, 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 the, or the micro range in which SAR sensor is working. So this will be taken from the metadata information and total radar uh, return will be calculated. Now it is expected that the maximum return will be this one. But generally in the field, we are not uh, getting uh, the, uh, the, the corner reflector, uh, uh, the return from the corner reflector according to our expectation. Like here, you can see that there are the several corner reflectors. So these are the corner reflectors number 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. These are the corner reflectors with uh, 4.8 meter side length. So, uh, and uh, this image, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, area is imaged with the help of the L band LS and uh, uh, LSSR uh, sensor, that is the airborne sensor, which is acquired over the Rosamond corner reflector array. So, uh, like here, after getting the values, analysis is done and the uh, calibration constant is derived. So generally, uh, to deriving the calibration constant, uh, generally this formula is used, IP multiplied with PAGR sine alpha divided by sigma, where IP is the background corrected intensity of the target, and PAGR is representing the ground range pixel area, and alpha is the angle of incidence at the targeted location. Okay, so with the help of that, one will be able to calculate and this sigma will be the radar cross section uh, from the from the uh, uh, from the uh, 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 corner reflector so with the help of that uh, the the calibration constant values will be derived now what the calibration constant value that is represented by k is derived so uh, the the uh, the radiometric calibration is performed when the formula is known, then uh, it could be easily calculated. Now, this formula is used mainly for the Invisat SR. Invisat SR was the satellite launched by European Space Agency. Uh, that uh, 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 satellite provided the data set in C band. So here you can see that uh, 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 the, there are several parameters like K is the absolute calibration constant and D and I J is representing your intensity value that is I square plus Q square. G, G is representing the two-way antenna gain for the particular resolution cell with angle of incidence uh, your, uh, or uh, with the angle of incidence theta for the uh, pixel uh, uh, which is coming at the ith row and jth column. Similarly, uh, uh, slant range distance for the particular pixel will be measured. And uh, uh, because this we will see in the, in the practical session, like how to find this slant range distance information for each and every pixel. Okay, and then a reference range distance will be there. And when will, it will multiply it with sign of angle uh, of incidence or the look angle for individual targets. So uh, for each and every pixel back is scatter coefficient will be generated. Now, uh, when the back scatter coefficient is generated, so the previous, uh, as per the previous formula, the image will be generated at the linear scale. The values will be ranging from zero to one. So all the all the values in the SAR data set will be ranging from zero to one, like 0 0.1, 0 0.0, 0 0.1, like that. But uh, uh, when they will be converted to the dB, dB is basically 10 log base 10 of the linear, so it will be, uh, the scale will be changed and finally the values will become negative. Like this is the sigma naught HH, sigma naught HV and sigma naught VV uh, images of uh, the radar set 2 data set that was acquired for the, so over San Francisco area. So now here you can see that the back scatter value uh, ranges are different for the different polarimetric combinations as well as the appearance of different targets are different because uh, the different objects they are going to uh, give the different sensitivity in the different polarimetric channels. So, if you will see the intensity dB, uh, sorry, uh, the the back scatter cross section values for HS. So, this is ranging from minus 3.33 to 25.83. Now, uh, the uh, the low uh, back scatter ranges are there in the uh, in the sigma naught HB because uh, relatively lower values will be received. And those values are ranging from minus 11 to 11.21 to minus 40.55 dB. 
and for uh, vp channel here you can see that uh, the values are ranging uh, similar to the uh, hh channel minus 3.782 minus 25.46 but what we are going to see we are going to see uh, the different sensitivity like here the uh, uh, these places are basically the vegetation covered undulating terrains so now here due to the vegetation there will be the multiple uh, reflection that will be coming due to the volumetric uh, uh, scattering from the object because volumetric scattering is the scattering contributed by the entire volume of the object when electromagnetic wave uh, will hit any forest structure or any tree so first interaction will be there from the tree leaf second interaction will be there from the branches and the, the and the other interaction will be there from the big branches as well as the stem ground interaction so all will be contributing in the scattering so that uh, there will multiple reflection and entire volume is contributing the uh, scattering so this will be known as the volumetric scattering so here in sigma not hb we are going to see the sensitivity towards the volumetric scattering and in sigma not hh we are going to see the sensitivity towards the double bound scattering because in urban area we are going to get the good scattering and in the case of sigma not vv if you will see that uh, relatively the smooth surfaces like this water body is highlighted so we will have the sensitivity for the for the for the smooth surface so this concept is used to retrieve the scattering as well as it is possible to implement the modeling approaches in which the uh, interaction of electromagnetic wave for different kind of objects could be implemented with the help of the quadpool data set now here you can see that this is the hh channel this is the before speckle filtering and this is the after speckle filtering so here you can see that there is enhancement in the radiometric property of the uh, of the uh, uh, data now we are going to see here the back scatter coefficient image generation of ri set one data set so ri set one data set uh, uh, was operated uh, in uh, linear polarization as well as the circular polarization and uh, this was the first satellite which was capable to provide the data set for, uh, in a linear as well as the uh, circular polarization uh, for the earth surface uh, and uh, and uh, here the similar formula will be implemented like the square root of i square plus q square and intensity will be i square plus q square where q, uh, q will be the image channel and i will be the in phase of the real channel now the back scatter coefficient formula if you will see for the ri set one the uh, this formula will be different in the case of ri set one uh, the formula is sigma not dv equals to 20 log base 10 dnp where dnp is representing the digital number for the particular pixel minus kdb where kdb is the calibration constant this information calibration constant of the data set will be provided in the metadata and uh, plus uh, 10 log uh, base 10 multiplied by sine of angle of incidence for the particular resolution cell or particular pixel divided by sine of uh, 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 incidence angle of uh, the central pixel so by implementing this formula one will be able to generate the back scatter coefficient image of uh, the ri set one data so this is the frs1 uh, hybrid pole data set so this is representing the rh band rh band is the transmission of right circular polarization and receiving of the linear horizontal polarization so back scatter images were generated and here you can see that the values are ranging from minus 4.39 to 19.14 and here you can see that uh, this is a uh, forest research institute in dehradun that campus could be easily seen and if, even here you can see that the fri building that uh, is also uh, visualized in this data set now uh, we are going to talk uh, something related to radiometric calibration of uh, newly launched sar satellite by isro that is the eos 04 re, uh, earlier name was ri set 1a this is renamed at es 04 so uh, they have given the formula uh, to calculate the beta not sigma not and the gamma not for the particular pixel so this is uh, uh, this has been given as the dnp square divided by the k calibration beta uh, underscore linear so this value will be calculated with the help of uh, the the uh, the beta not value as well as the calibration constant so these values could be calculated 
Now, uh, this is the recent image of EOS 4 data set. So this data set was acquired on 12 September 2022. Input resolution, uh, along track resolution, it means that the azimuth resolution is three meter and the range resolution is 2.16 centimeter and the data set was acquired in FRS1 mode. And uh, in uh, the, this FRS1 mode has uh, capability to acquire the data set in the fully polarimetric quad pole mode. So HHHV, VH plus VV data sets were uh, uh, all the four polarimetric channels were there. Now, with the help of the four polarimetric channels, uh, uh, some advanced uh, processes were implemented. Uh, 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 modeling approaches were implemented to retrieve the scattering from different scattering elements uh, from different features. So here you can see that uh, the residential area or the, the urban area, this is going to uh, show the dominance of the even bounce scattering. And, uh, somewhere we are going to get the volumetric scattering as well. And uh, the water body is going to appear as the very dark. This is going to show the odd bounce scattering. So uh, the model-based decomposition was implemented on this data set to retrieve this scattering information. And a very good uh, scattering information is retrieved. And here you can see now there is a park area. So uh, if I am not wrong, this is park only because in the Google Earth image, this is appearing as uh, uh, as part. So, uh, or the vegetation covered and grasslands are also there. So here you can see that this is appearing, this is going to show the volumetric scattering because vegetation is going to show the volumetric scattering. Urban area is mainly going to show the double bounce scattering and uh, smooth surfaces are going to show the, uh, uh, the smooth uh, uh, surfaces are going to show the odd bounce scattering or surface scattering. But from uh, uh, several other features, we can also get the volumetric scattering due to the multiple reflection from those targeted objects. So the people are working to working to minimize uh, the volumetric scattering, which has come in due to the alignments of uh, particular alignments of buildings or due to the multiple reflections uh, uh, from the buildings. Uh, and other features. So people are continuously working and uh, several algorithms have been developed to, to minimize uh, these, these distortions. Now, uh, uh, we have talked about the radiometric calibration. There is one more calibration that is performed, but we are not going to perform right now uh, because uh, in the practical classes, we will be performing the radiometric calibration only. So, but there is a requirement of polarimetric calibration. Generally, this is the duty of the space agencies to perform the polarimetric calibration and provide the data set. So, uh, polarimetric calibration here, you can see that without polarimetric calibration, as here you can also to those, uh, see that this is the riverbed, and riverbed should show the dominance of the surface scattering. But since the data set was not polarimetrically calibrated, so we were getting the dominance of uh, uh, dominance of double bounce scattering. But when the polarimetric calibration was implemented, so here you can see that the river bed is showing the dominance of the dominance of the uh, surface scattering, and the urban area is showing the uh, dominance of the uh, double bounce scattering. Okay, and now uh, this uh, polarimetric calibration is also performed with the help of the corner reflectors. These corner reflectors are placed in the field. And uh, this corner reflector, dihedral and trihedral corner reflector. So uh, when uh, you will see the dihedral corner reflector value, so how to analyze there is a requirement of polarimetric calibration. So there are uh, some alpha values. So alpha values are checked. So the theoretical alpha value for trihedral corner reflector should be zero. And uh, theoretical alpha value for dihedral corner reflector will be 90 degrees. So in this, uh, uncalibrated uh, data set, polarimetrically uncalibrated data set, alpha values for trihedral corner reflector were 74.38. So here you can see that this is appearing in the red color. Uh, 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 not here, here, here it is trihedral corner reflector is appearing, here it is appearing in the red color. And uh, after calibration, after polarimetric calibration, now here it is, it is uh, very low towards near to zero. It is still there, 4.87. And uh, again, dihedral corner reflector theoretical value should be 90 degree. And it is showing uh, the observed alpha value was very low. Here you can see it is still represented in blue color. This is 11.56. So after polarimetric calibration, this was near to 90 degree. 
So uh, the data set are generally polymetrically calibrated before uh, 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 giving it to the user. So this is the responsibility of the space agency. But one should know that whether data set is polymetrically calibrated or not, because sometimes due to the like when the people are processing the data set, they are thinking that there is processing error. But sometimes due to the polymetric distortion, uh, if, the, uh, if the data set is not well calibrated, we are getting the error in the data. Now, I will suggest you one can go to the uh, several tutorials. So very good uh, MTech and MSC thesis are available on the given sites. One can go through these sites. And uh, I think if there will be changing the link, so uh, later on I will provide the latest links. And there are very good tutorials uh, maintained by uh, different portals like European Space Agency has maintained the tutorial for uh, uh, SAR dataset as well as the tutorial maintained by Canadian uh, uh, portal. So these tutorials are there. One can go through these tutorials and uh, they can make the project. Now, when uh, one is interested to go with the uh, packages to process the SAR data set, so there are uh, open source and the commercial uh, packages. Some packages are listed here. Uh, like this is the uh, recent uh, uh, development of the software interferometric scientific computing environment that is ISCE. This is recently developed for NASA ISO synthetic aperture radar mission, NISR mission. So this is mainly uh, developed by uh, JPL. And uh, this uh, software, this uh, is freely available to all the users, but uh, this is going to work uh, with uh, the Python framework uh, in, the, in the Linux system. ROI pack is also there. That was also developed by JPL. And uh, similarly, GMT SAR and Dory software is there. And Sentinel One Toolbox, today's practical, we are going to do with the Sentinel One Toolbox. I have given the link uh, to download the Sentinel data set, uh, not here in the practical folder. Uh, I have uploaded and uh, given the link to download the recent version of the software. Now, when we are talking about the commercial packages, so commercial packages, commercial softwares are also there. And uh, these softwares uh, are uh, Gamma, uh, developed by uh, Gamma Remote Sensing, Invis RSK by XLS, Diopson Software, Imagine Data. Uh, there are different packages. Uh, one can uh, go with the commercial packages as well. But I generally prefer the Sentinel one because this is freely available and uh, not only for one platform, for all the platform, like for Windows, for uh, Linux, uh, so all the platforms, uh, uh, all the famous platforms, the version is available. Now, if one is interested to download the data set, so, so uh, this is the link of the Copernicus Hub. So they can uh, simply click the link and they can download the data set. So if you see the, in the Copernicus Hub, there are three satellites, Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, and Sentinel-3. So Sentinel-1 data, all the data sets are freely available to all the users. Sentinel-1 carries a single C-band synthetic aperture radar instrument. And Sentinel-2 is the optical multispectral sensor. Sentinel-3 is carrying ocean and land color instrument, uh, sea and land surface temperature radiometer instrument, and the altimeter. So here, according to our today's class, so we, uh, you can explore the Sentinel-1 data set for your study area. But uh, today's practical, we will do the, with the sample data set and the link of the sample data set has also been uploaded to the portal. Now, if you will open the Copernicus Hub, so uh, uh, this uh, in, uh, portal you are going to get. And with the help of this portal, you will be able to uh, uh, search the data set for your study area. And now for the Alaska Satellite Facility, uh, ASF, uh, you can also search the data set. And uh, the data set uh, could be downloaded. Sentinel-1 data set averages as the data set of ELOS-1, Pulsar-1, and several other data sets are available on this portal. And uh, you can download the data set, uh, data set uh, for your study area. Now, I have uh, completed uh, the theory portion of the lecture uh, for the SAR data processing. And uh, now, I 
expect uh, the question from the participant. Now I am going to stop sharing. Is there any question from the participant side? You can write your question in the chat box. Now, one question is that it seems like there are a lot of methods of processing. Is it easy to tell what has already been done when downloading a data set? Now, uh, generally, uh, like uh, when you will uh, explore the Sentinel-1 data set, so uh, Sentinel-1 is going to provide all the level of data sets, raw data. So uh, raw to uh, signal compression could also be done. But generally, we are preferring to download SLC data, single look complex data set, label one data. Okay. So today practical also we are going to do with the single look complex label one data set in the second session. There is one more question, uh, Dr. Shashi. The question is, can the horizontal and vertical polarization, uh, polarized backscattered signals Yes, yes, yes. By the same yes, yes. Actually, uh, 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 in the spaceborne uh, 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 SAR, all the SAR sensors are monostatic. Monostatic means the single antenna is used to transmit the electromagnetic pulses, and uh, the same antenna is used to receive the signals. So there is only one antenna which is going to uh, uh, receive the horizontal and vertical component. But this is the capability of the sensor uh, uh, or, or the different modules uh, within the antenna, which are going to receive the horizontal and the vertical components. Will there be any question in YouTube also? I do not have link of YouTube. Let me check, let me check, I'll get back to you. I don't think there are any questions on YouTube as far as I can okay. check. Okay, okay, no problem. So, uh, in the second uh, session, when should we start the second session? Uh, if you want to take a break, it's fine. Otherwise, we can start immediately as, as you wish. A uh, five minute break, I would like to. Yes, definitely. So, we can take a five minute break and then uh, start. In the meanwhile, you can uh, give the instructions for downloading the data set or the files what is required for the next session. Uh, I have given the complete data set to the participants. Uh, one minute only.
एक आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर द स्क्रीन सो दैट सो दैट पार्टिसिपेंट्स कैन सी द फोल्डर आई थिंक द फोल्डर इज विजिबल टू देम Yeah, yes, so, so uh, in uh, SAR processing, I try to upload the subset data that was of approximately 500 MB, but the data set was not down or not uh, uploaded uh, because it was giving error in uploading the data set. So what uh, what I did, I have given the link of the full scene of the data set. One can download when you will open it. You are uh, uh, You are going to have the link to download the Elos Two Pulsar Two dataset for San Francisco. Okay, that uh, that will be G folder. You will have to unzip it. Okay, and uh, and uh, I have uh, uploaded similarly the link of the software that Snap software. Okay, so in the in the Snap software, uh, uh, there is a link to uh, one minute. I would like to show uh, uh, the link is given to download the version nine point zero and version eight point zero. Okay, both uh, the links are given. The participant can download any one. But uh, uh, I found that there is currently some problem, uh, particularly in my system. I found that there is a problem. This is not uh, reading the Elos Two Pulsar Two dataset, and uh, Snap version eight point zero does download it, install it, and uh, and uh, you will be able to you will be able to uh, 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 update it, and uh, after that, it, it, uh, this eight point zero is working fine. Okay. And uh, I was trying to upload this subset folder, but uh, this is uh, approximately 400 MB. But I was not able to upload it. I do not know uh, the reason why I was not able to. Can I try once more? Uh, yes, you can try once more. Otherwise, the participants will have to use the use the uh, full scene, complete scene of the data set. Okay, we will wait for the upload because it is taking why it is taking too much time. I don't know. And I have given the practical handouts. Okay, PPT to do the practical. Okay, so all the steps are clearly mentioned. So I will first explain these steps. What we are doing that, okay, and then I will perform all the same thing with the help of the software, so that the participants can uh, do the processing of uh, the SAR data set at their own. Sure, so that works. So we can you can take a break of five minutes, sir, and then okay. in the meanwhile the participants can download. the software and the data set okay let's see
डॉक्टर शशि यस yeah uh, the larger data set is 5 gb which will probably take a lot of time yes uh, so can you upload the smaller one in a google drive or one drive and share the link here yes that will be i think uh, link i uh, yes 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 uh, google drive i can upload and share the link yes yes only for that data set okay okay will take the next two to three months uh, there was one more question uh, dr shashi when you were aware Okay. Yes, yes. I'm just. What SAR image is used to carry out the DINSAR sec technique? One minute only. Uh, can anyone try this link? Just a second, one minute. Yes, I am able to access it, and I have put on download. Okay, means it is downloadable now. Yes. Okay, now uh, we are coming to the question. Uh, uh, the software is not supporting. I, I will come to that also. Uh, uh, now uh, there is a question related to d insert technique okay so uh, not only d insert uh, with the help of uh, the sentinel images sentinel images the d in, not only d insert advanced interferometric sar like persistent uh, scattering sar interferometry as well as the s bus techniques all those could be implemented to uh, uh, the data set to find out the subsidence uh, mapping at um, at millimeter scale okay so uh, uh, the only one thing one should keep in mind the data set should be acquired in the interferometric mode for the same area and the data set when you are downloading the data set all the data set should be in single look complex format slc format when you will download the slc format data set and if the data sets will be acquired in interferometric mode for the sentinel one large amount of interferometric pairs for the several years are available 
So even the people are doing the yearly uh, subsidence mapping and monitoring using uh, PS in SAR and SBAR technique. So it is possible to do. Uh, Uh, someone is uh, having the issue with the download the data set. It depends on their uh, download. Yeah, I know the data is heavy data because SAR data sets, even Sentinel-1 data set also, if you will see that is also very heavy. So the data sets are heavy. So uh, they uh, may take uh, more time in processing also. And uh, uh, there is a uh, one question related to SNAP. Yeah, someone has downloaded the data set from Google Drive. Okay, now uh, if you'll see Mac version of the SNAP is also available. Okay, so if you'll see. ESA SNAP. So simply Google ESA SNAP or SNAP ESA. You are going to see the link. And if you'll see the link, the, link, uh, the data set, oh, oh, one minute. I think I have not shared. I, I just Googled uh, ISA snap. Okay, ISA snap. Just Google ISA snap, you are going to get this link. Is it visible to all? Am I audible to all? Yes, yes, I got about. It's visible. It's visible. Oh, okay. So you are going to get this link. When you click on this link, you are going to get the link of the software. Okay. So here, this is the Windows 64 bit uh, version of the software, Sentinel 1. This is for the Max operating system, and this is for the Unix 64 bit. So for all the platforms, of, uh, or you can say most famous platforms they are providing. And uh, it might be possible that for other platforms, it may take uh, some time to uh, install it, but in Windows installation is very easy. Okay. <clears throat> because here also I'm going to show the uh, like demonstration with the Windows version. When this will be installed, their interface will be same. Uh, interface will uh, for the Unix and the Mac version, this will be approximately similar. Okay, so now uh, what uh, we are going to see that uh, uh, first I'm going to close this software. Okay, so uh, should I start uh, first the uh, demonstration? Then I think in the meanwhile, uh, uh, they will be able to uh, download the data. First, I will show the uh, like uh, the PPT which I had made. Uh, practical handout uh, has been uploaded. So based on that PPT, I will demonstrate about these things and then I will perform the SAR data processing. Okay. So, Uh, now, in the SAR data processing, uh, we are going to uh, do the radiometric calibration and the ortho rectification of the SAR data set. So first, uh, we are going to see in the slides, we are going to see the data specification. Then uh, we are going to uh, import uh, the data set in the software. Then the multi-looking will be performed. In the multi-looking, both operations will be performed, slant to ground range uh, uh, conversion uh, to minimize the slant range ambiguity, as well as, uh, as, well as uh, the multi-looking will also be performed uh, to generate the square picture. So in the same multi-looking operation, both will be performed. Then we will go for the radiometric uh, calibration or radiometric correction. Then we will go for the speckle filtering, then terrain correction. Then we will export the VOS uh, in the Google Earth. Now, uh, this is the specification of the data set. The data set is LOS2 Pulsar 2. The data set was acquired for San Francisco area. This data set is provided in the COS format. 
Okay, and uh, the data set was acquired in strip map mode. In strip map mode, we had seen that the data set will be acquired in a strip. Now, polarization. Uh, so, this is quad pole data set, which will be having all the four polarizations HH, HV, VH, and VV. And uh, if you will see the angle of incidence, so this data set is having angle of incidence 33.85, and it was acquired on 6th June 2015. Now, when the uh, uh, sensor was acquiring the data set, then uh, the sensor was looking in the right direction. So uh, the electromagnetic waves were transmitted in the right direction. And uh, now uh, we are, uh, uh, when you will open it, so you are going to see the different files. These are the main data files. But the softwares are not directly going to uh, read these files. They are mainly going to read the metadata file. The metadata file is the volume file. So Snap software is going to read this volume file. Now, uh, uh, in your system, what you will have to do, you will have to go to the Snap software icon or in the start menu, you can type the Snap and you can open the Snap software. Now, when you will open the Snap software, you are going to get uh, uh, this interface. Okay, so in this interface, this is the interface for the toolbar. So different tools will be there. And uh, this is the menu bar. So we will be mainly using the menu bar to uh, explore the tools to uh, process the SAR data set. And if uh, one is interested to do some kind of search, uh, which is there within the uh, uh, Snap, so search bar is also given. Now, this is the main window. So here, uh, when we will open any data set, so here we are going to see the data set in main window. Uh, now here, there will be the pixel info. So we are going to get the information of each and every pixel. And uh, the product uh, library is there. So when the product will be open, so this will be open in the product explorer and product library will be seen for the different product. Now, our first option will be to import the data set. So in the very easy manner, in the, your practical handout, it is given that you will have to first click, go to the file, click on file, then go to the import. In the import, you are going to get the several options. There is one option for SAR sensors. When you, look, when you go to the SAR sensors, so in the SAR sensors, uh, you are going to have a large list of the space one uh, SAR sensors. So here, since our sensor is, uh, our satellite sensor is LOS2 and data set is CEO, CEOS format. So I will have to click on uh, the LOS2 CEOS format to import the data set when this will be clicked. So you will have to, uh, it will ask to redirect to the directory where you have saved the data set. So you will have to uh, see the file. So only volume file will be visible. So you will have to click the volume file and then click on import. So when you will import it, so the data set will be imported. Now the, the data set, uh, the data set uh, will appear in, uh, uh, appear in the product explorer. So here you can see that uh, the metadata information is also there vector data, tie points, quick loads, bands. So here we are mainly going to the bands because this contains all the data set. So now here you can see that each polarimetric channels like HH, it will have one real channel or in phase represented by I, one imaginary that is represented by quadrature or Q. So each polarimetric combination will be represented by one real channel and one imaginary channel. So here you can see that uh, real channel and imaginary channel for HH, HV, VH, and VV all are there and the software is able to read this one. Not only this, software can virtually generate the intensity image also because if you'll see in the data set, this is not generated, but the software can, so that this is the uh, given V, means it can virtually generate the, the, the uh, uh, intensity image that could be visualized. And if one wants to save it, one will be able to save this band also. Now, uh, 
after uh, importing the data set. So when you will see the metadata, because in the previous we have seen that one tab is there for the metadata also, when you expand or double click the metadata, so there will be options of the abstracted metadata and the original product metadata. So detailed metadata information related to the sensor and the other information will be there in this uh, uh, detailed original product metadata. But uh, abstracted metadata will provide the sufficient information to understand the mode of acquisition and all the other details and date of acquisition of the data set. Now, uh, when you will see the tie points grid, so tie point grids uh, is uh, going to, uh, uh, when, you, when you double click it, so the, 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 uh, uh, the incident angle uh, file will be open because when you expand the tie point grid, so you are going to see the latitude and longitude information as well as the slant range time and the incidence angle. So first I will uh, go, going to show you uh, like how to see the incidence angle file information. So here the dark one is representing this is the near range and the bright one is representing the, the far range. Okay, because here value is higher. So in near range value will be low, uh, incidence angle value will, will be low and in the far range incidence angle will be high. So this is appearing bright. Uh, now, uh, if uh, one wants to uh, do the calculation of the incidence angle, wants to see how what are the values. So after opening that file, uh, uh, one can go to the analysis and click on statistics. In statistics, uh, if you click on the refresh button, it is going to show you the entire statistics, minimum value, maximum value, mean value, and all the statistical parameters would be seen. And uh, another uh, uh, another grid will be generated for the slant range time. This is the the range with uh, the uh, this will be the range distance which we had discussed in the in the lecture class. This is the R naught. This is the distance between uh, sensor to the target. So what will happen uh, when you double click it again? Uh, this is going to appear from dark to bright because. The objects which are in the near range, they will be sensed first in the uh, with less time. Distance will be less, and in the far end, distance will be large. So that the uh, the large distance is uh, represented here in the bright color, and the small distances, range distances are represented in the dark color. Now again, uh, if uh, you will see the uh, range distance values. So range distance values could be easily visualized. And here the range distance values are in nanoseconds. Nanoseconds, this is representing the two-way propagation of electromagnetic wave from sensor to the target and after scattering from target to the sensor. So the two-way propagation of electromagnetic waves are there. So this nanoseconds value, when this will be multiplied with the speed of light and when it will be divided by two, it will give the the, uh, the actual distance from sensor to the target. Uh, so uh, this distance is used in uh, uh, mainly in interferometry. Now, uh, since the data set is of large size, so what we are going to do, we are going to uh, do the subset of the data set. Okay, so subset option will be there in the, in the raster. Okay, so in the raster tab, when you click, you are going to get the subset option. So when you click on the subset option, so you are going to get uh, a box. So this box will appear and you will be able to subset the, the data set. If you want to increase or decrease the size, you will be able to increase or decrease it. And accordingly, uh, uh, you, can, you can select the area. So here in this, uh, in this case, the study area is selected only mainly for this uh, San Francisco city. So the, the data size here, you can see that the, the data size is reduced to approximately uh, uh, size uh, is approximately 651 MB. So uh, in, uh, like the data set which I have uploaded that is uh, smaller than this size. Now, after that, when you subset the data set, so again, there will be like in the product explorer, another product will be added. And this product will have the name subset because you perform the subset option. So subset uh, name will automatically come and uh, the data name will be there. Okay. 
So again, when you will open the data set, so you are going to see the intensity uh, value and the other values in the in the in the uh, in the in the product explorer. So in the main view, you are able to see the the, the data set. Now, after that, uh, we are going to implement the multi-loop operation. So uh, in the multi-loop operation, first slant to ground range conversion will be done, and then multi-looking will be performed uh, to uh, generate the uh, square pixels. So when you will click the multi-looking tab, so, so this window will appear. So in this window here in the source band, we will have to select the subset or if automatically it has selected subset, so there is no issue. Otherwise, uh, if the main data set, big data set is selected, so we will have to go with uh, the data set which is having the small size. Okay, the subset data set will be selected. And here you can see that since the multi-looking operation is performed, so accordingly output of the data name will be changed. So here you can see that the target product will have the same name and it will be another, uh, it, it will be extended by underscore ml it means that the 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 output product is the multi looped okay so uh, this uh, multi looping will be performed and if you want to change the directory if you want to if you want to select uh, uh, the data set in a particular folder by default it will go to the c drive uh, 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 or, or any specified drive. But if you're interested to uh, save the data set in your particular folder, so from the directory, you can select the directory and, and, and uh, you can save the data set there. So that after that, all the processed output uh, will be saved to the created uh, uh, folder. Now, after that, uh, here you are going to see the input uh, 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 output parameters. This is IO parameters. Now, after that, we are going for the processing parameters. Now, in the processing parameters, processing parameters, we are having the, uh, the uh, by default, all will be selected, so no need to select one. If one is selected to do the processing with one polymetric combination, then also it is possible. But uh, I will suggest uh, not to uh, uh, select a particular polarization. If you are selecting particular polarization, so I will select uh, simply put control A so that the, all the polymetric combinations will be selected and the processing could be done. Now, uh, automatically the software can, like in the previous case, uh, we uh, extracted the metadata information because several softwares, they are not able to, not able to calculate the number of loops, the range loops and range loops automatically because range resolution should be multiplied by uh, one divided by sine of uh, angle of incidence or the look angle so that uh, the uh, uh, azimuth and uh, range resolutions will be different and the number of loops will be decided uh, uh, chosen to uh, generate the square pixel set. So, but here in this case, uh, automatically square pixels will be generated with the help of one and two. And if one is feeling that the, the default uh, the default value, suppose you, are pro, you have experience in SAR data processing and you feel that no one and two is not the correct one. According to your calculation, some other, other value is coming so that you can check the independent looks and independent looks and, uh, and, uh, and you, can, you, can, uh, 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 you can give the, uh, your calculated uh, number of looks. And now here uh, the uh, square pixel shape, the square pixel shape will be approximately 5.827 meter. So this will be generated. And what you will have to do, you will have to click on run. When you click on run, so again, the data set will be multi-looked. So it will take sometimes, it depends on your system, how much time it is taking, like uh, when it was processed in one system. So it took 19 second time to process the subset data set. But if the lower configuration system will be there, so it might be possible that it may take the more time. And if higher configuration systems are there, so it may take the less than 19 uh, uh, seconds time also. Okay. So now after, after, after running that, uh, when the process will be completed, then simply close this window, multi-looking window, just close the window. And in the product explorer, another product will be added. 
below the below the previous one. So now this product, since this is multi-loop, so it will have the under is for ML. Now here you can see that with uh, azimuth loops two and the range loops one, when the data set was processed. So here you can see that there is a difference, like uh, the, the, the the there was slant to ground and ambiguity, and that ambiguity is removed here. Okay. Now we are uh, going to see how to generate the RGB view. So uh, what I will suggest you just open this view uh, by uh, double click it, open this view and uh, go to the open RGB image window. When you click on the open RGB window, so uh, here they, they, this will be asking several options. So simply select the option poly. Poly, uh, uh, because here RGB analysis is done with the with the poly view. So in the poly view, uh, uh, this is one view you can explore uh, uh, in the help file. Uh, this is one way to represent the RGB because here uh, the, in the poly one by taking the combination of HH minus VV, double bounce scattering elements will be highly highlighted. By taking the combination of HV and VH, the volumetric scattering elements will be highlighted. And by the com taking the combination of HS plus VV, the, the surface scattering element uh, of the smooth surfaces will be highlighted in blue color. Okay. So after that, uh, when you click on OK, so one RGB uh, view will be uh, appearing here. So in this RGB view, here you can see that, uh, that uh, the volumetric scattering or the multiple reflections are obtained from, uh, uh, volumetric scattering is obtained from the vegetation. And uh, the uh, uh, urban area is showing the even bounce scattering or double bounce scattering. And uh, the sea surface is showing the odd bounce scattering, which is represented in the blue color. All the other scattering elements are also there, like the uh, uh, according to the dominance of suppose there are the mixed scatters. So accordingly, color is changing in the in the image. Suppose there are dominance of double bounce scattering as well as the volumetric scattering both. So those features are going to appear as uh, appear in the yellow color. So some yellow patches we are also able to see here. Now, after that, uh, we are going for the radiometric calibration that uh, uh, the purpose of the previous, uh, previous RGB was to just to do the visualization. After that, you can close that window. Now, after that, we are going to the radar tool. Now, in the radar tool, uh, we are going to the calibration. So here, uh, we are going to calibrate the data set. So in radar, there will be option for the radiometric and after that you will have to select the calibrate the same thing is written in the manual also you will have to go to the radar menu then radiometric and then you will have to click on calibrate so when you click on the calibrate so again this uh, window will appear so in this window again input and output parameters you will have to check so now the input uh, parameter or source should be the subset file as well as the file which was multi loop so under score ML file, we are going to select. Now when this file will be selected, so uh, it means that radiometric calibration will be performed on the multi-loop data set. And the output for file name will have an extension of under score CAL, means the data set is calibrated. So now you will have to uh, select the input and the output parameters, and you will have to check the directory whether it is going uh, to the right path or not. Here it is going in the right folder. So uh, after that, I'm going to select the processing parameters. So in the processing parameters, there are several options like uh, save as complex output. So sometimes like when we are going for the polarimetric uh, modeling, so we are preferring to save the data set as complex output. But here we are going to generate the sigma naught image at the DB scale in this exercise. So sigma naught uh, DB image. So here we will have to click on save DB. If one wants to generate the gamma naught image, so gamma naught can also be generated. And if uh, one is interested to generate the beta naught image that we have seen all the three images, sigma naught, beta naught, gamma naught. So all the images could be generated, but here mainly interested in beta naught. So, sorry, uh, uh, sigma naught. So at DB scale, so we are going to select the save in DB because if you are not going to select anything, 
So by default, it will generate the radiometric calibration uh, of uh, sigma naught. Okay. And uh, when it will be selected uh, dB, so it is going to uh, it, it is going to uh, do the uh, uh, generate the uh, radiometrically calibrated image at dB scale. Now, when you click on run, so the process uh, will run, and uh, uh, here you can see that uh, the process is done, and now. Uh, uh, the image will be uh, 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 the image will be generated here. Now in the product explorer, so multi-looked calibrated product will be added, and you will be able to see the sigma not HH dB, sigma not HV dB, VH dB, and VB dB. So these images will be generated uh, once you uh, uh, do the radiometric calibration. Now after that. Uh, uh, if one is interested to see the pixel value, so what you will have to do, you can open any image and you can navigate to the uh, pixel info. So when you look, uh, click on the pixel info, so you will be able to see the pixel values. Now uh, these images are generated here. So sigma not HH image at GB scale. So here you can see that the values are ranging from 0 0.02 to minus 36.84. And uh, for VV, this is minus 2.62 to minus 30.92. For HV, this is minus 11.31 to uh, minus 45.45. And similar range is there for the sigma not VV, uh, sigma not uh, VH. So here you can see that in different polarimetric channels, uh, different features are enhanced. Okay, so by using the different polarimetric combination, one will be able to retrieve the the different parameters now we are going to perform the speckle filtering so uh, the speckle filtering tool will be there under radar so when you click on the radar tab so here you are going to get the option for the speckle filtering in speckle filtering you will have to select because this is the single product so you will have to select the single product speckle filter when you select the speckle filter so again here you will have to select the input parameters that is the multi-looked calibrated data, multi-looked calibrated subset data, and here output will be named under the score SPK. Okay, SPK means the data set is speckled filter. Okay, and after that, uh, when you uh, click on the processing parameters, there will be, there will be several uh, 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 filtering approaches. Like uh, if you do not want to do any filtering, so it is given none, uh, but uh, or if, uh, no need to select none because here we are doing the speckle filtering. So you can select any filtering approach like box car, median, frost, gamma map. Okay, you can select this filtering approach. Okay, so gamma map and here I have given the kernel size, window size three by three. So it will uh, it will total consider the nine elements from the SAR data set and uh, to implement the kernel and finally uh, the filtering will be done. Now in the single product filtering, now this filtering is in the area of is small. So this was completed in two seconds. So the data set was processed. And uh, after that, I, it is always suggested to close the window because otherwise what will happen when we will not close the window, there will be the multiple windows of the multiple operations. So, uh, so uh, it is always suggested to close. Now, after that, uh, in the product view, uh, you are going to see the speckle filtered uh, scatter image. And uh, in, the, in, the, in the band, you are going to see this uh, data set. So here, this is the data set with his speckle. So, and uh, another data set is without his speckle. So here you can see that uh, reduction of the noise, uh, uh, we can easily uh, observe in both the product. Okay, like here noise is more, speckle noise is more, in the data set uh, with his speckle. And uh, this is after speckle filtering without speckle, the data set is, uh, data set is appearing, appearing more smooth and uh, it has, has the more radiometric enhancement. Uh, now, after that, we are going to perform the tariff correction. So tariff correction will be there in the radar tab itself. In the radar, we are going to for the geometry, then tyrant correction, then range Doppler tyrant correction. This is the very famous algorithm which is used to uh, do the radiometric tyrant correction. 
to minimize uh, the effect uh, due to the topography. Okay, so uh, uh, this is also known as the process of ortho rectification of the data set. So uh, here, uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, geometric correction, like here, radiometric correction, radiometric calibration we have done. This is the geometric correction in which we are going to minimize the effect due to the topography of the terrain. So uh, uh, here, when you click the range of the terrain correction option, so you are going to get uh, input and output parameter option and processing uh, parameters will also be there. So here we will have to select uh, the speckle filtered product and the output will have the name underscore TC. It means that the data set is terrain corrected. Okay, and the directory will also be there. So uh, one can uh, uh, see that uh, location where the data set is going. Now, after that, when you will see the processing parameters, so in the processing parameters, there are uh, several options. So source band, no need to select any particular, but here uh, in the digital elevation model, by default, it will be selected three seconds. That will be approximately 90 meter resolution. So I generally prefer to work with the 30 meter. So one second uh, you can select. And if the latest version like 9.0, you will install. So you are going to, yes. Any question? So uh, if uh, you will select uh, uh, 30 meter, then uh, I uh, particularly, I found that uh, accuracy in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the ortho rectified product is better in comparison to the 90 meter. So, um, so uh, here Copernicus product is also available in the 30 meter. So when you will install the latest version, so it will be able to automatically read the uh, Copernicus uh, 30 meter. Now here, uh, uh, in this example, I have given the SRTM one second read. Okay. And here the, uh, to run this process, you require the internet connection because in the background, it is going to download the digital elevation model according to the extent of your study area or extent of uh, the scene of the data set. Okay. So this will be downloaded and here uh, the, you can select either nearest neighbor here, I selected bilinear interpolation. So bilinear interpolation will be selected. And uh, here you can see that uh, square grid pixel spacing is changed now. And, uh, and uh, here do not check this mask out area without elevation. Because when you will check it, so what will happen? Uh, the uh, area without elevation, like particularly in the case of San Francisco, water body will be masked out. But if we want to keep the water body in our output product, okay, and you can uh, you can check according to the choice of the product. So here you can select the source bands, uh, and you can select the digital elevation model because in output digital elevation model will also be shown, and incidence angle file, and as well as the local incidence angle file, so that you can you can compare it later. Okay, now uh, when the process was running, so this process was completed in, uh, in 16 seconds and all the products were, uh, were generated. Now here you can see that uh, in the product explorer, the, the ortho rectified sigma naught HH, HV, uh, VH and V will be generated as well as the elevation. Basically this is the this elevation model that will also be generated local incident angle file with the help of the external DM. The local incident angle file will also be generated. And uh, similarly, incident angle which is generated from the lipsoid that will also be generated. Okay, because here in the ortho rectification or in the back scatter calibration, the, uh, the uh, uh, incident angle values have been used. Now, when you will, when you will simply double click this product, so this product will appear and this is ortho rectified product and you are able to see this ortho rectified product. Okay, now uh, again uh, here if you see the San Francisco bridge, so San Francisco Golden Gate bridge is clearly visible and uh, its uh, tower are also uh, giving some appearance in this data set. Now, uh, when the, uh, after that, what you will have to do if you want to visualize the, the data set on Google Earth also. So what you can do, you can simply right click on it. Okay. Uh, 
but for that purpose, you will have to download and install Google Earth also, because if Google Earth will not be there, so the KMZ file uh, are not going to work. Okay. So what you can do, you can open the data set like this previously open data set in the software. After that, you will have to right click on it. When you right click on it, then you will have to click on uh, uh, export view as Google Earth KMZ file. When the KMZ file will be opened, so what you can do, uh, you can export the data set to KMZ file and uh, the file will be saved here. And uh, this here you can see that uh, according to your output location, this will ask your output location. And uh, when you will save the sigma not hh with the name, the file has been saved here. And when you double click this file, so this and if the Google Earth is installed, so the processed area, the scene will be exactly overlapped on the on the area of uh, the San Francisco. Okay. So there you can you can do a kind of uh, 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 image analysis, like what is the appearance of the SAR data set in uh, in uh, in uh, optical multispectral Google Earth as well as uh, the SAR data set. Okay, there are uh, several other processing steps also, but since the data set is heavy, so we are going to process do the process of only one data set. Okay, so. Uh, now we are going to uh, perform the perform the uh, processing in the software. In between that, if you have any question, we can discuss. So I hope that you all have downloaded the data set and you have installed the software also. So now, uh, since there is no question, so I am going to demonstrate the processing of the SAR data set, okay? So now I am going to open the SNAP software. So simply click on this. So SNAP software will be opened. Now it is asking to check for the latest version. So currently I do not want to check for the latest version. Okay. Now I am going to import the data set. So I am going to import the original data set. And suppose if we have downloaded the subset, so you can you can directly go to the open product, open product, and simply click this subset. Okay, open it. The product will be added to the product explorer. Okay, so you will be able to see the product. Okay, so uh, again I am going to repeat. If uh, if I want to close it, so I am I'm going to close this product, right click it, close product. Now, suppose if you have downloaded the subset, so go to the file, then open product, and then double click or simply single click subset and click on open, so that the product will be open. And when you will expand the product, and the data set will be there in the bands, so you will be able to see, the different bands. Okay. Now, suppose uh, 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 here I am going to start with uh, start with uh, the SLC data, single loop complex data set. So the data set is saved here. Okay. Saved here. So if if you will see the data set. So these are the main files, 
Okay. Uh, uh, actually, uh, these are the main files. These are the preview images. These are the main files, but the software is not going to read these files. The software is going to read the volume file, the file with the name volume. Okay. And the preview images are also there. If one wants to see, they can uh, open and see the preview images. Okay. So now uh, my data set is uh, saved at this location, uh, like this PC, data drive, I lost San Francisco, then San Francisco, I lost to data. Okay. So now I am going to import the product. So to import the product, what I will have to do, I will have to click on file, then I will have to go on import, and then I will have to go to SAR sensors, okay? So now in the SAR sensors, large list of SAR sensors is there. So I will have to click on LOS2 CEOS because our data format is LOS2 CEOS. Suppose one is working with ComSat data or a dart set one or a dart set two data, then they will have to select the sensor according to uh, the data. So this is the data of the LOS2 Pulsar 2 in CEOS format. So I am going to open, I, I am going to select LOS2 CEOS to import the data. Now I selected, but here I am going to change the directory because my uh, data set is saved in D drive. So I am going to uh, D drive and this is LOS2 San Francisco data. Okay, so I clicked on LOS2 San Francisco data. Now when I double click, now here you can see that uh, uh, this is uh, 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 on the, if you select all files type, so it is going to show all files, but here we are mainly selecting going for the LOS2 COS product. So it is going to show the volume file. So when you click on volume file and after selecting the volume file, clicking it, just click on import product. Now, when I clicked import product, this product has been imported, okay. Now, uh, the original metadata, uh, sorry, original data will be there uh, in uh, uh, the, the, the bands folder, but metadata could also be explored. So I am going to click on this and I want to see the abstracted metadata. Okay. So in abstracted metadata, you are going to get the several information, like what is the product name, product name will be there. Mission name will be there and the antenna was pointing means antenna was transmitting the electromagnetic waves in the right direction. And uh, here you can see that all the orbit information will be there. And uh, the time of data acquisition, uh, the first liner and last time data acquisition is also given here. Oh, this was on 24th March 2015. Uh, any question is there? Someone is speaking? Okay. Okay. Now, uh, here uh, uh, you can see the data set was acquired on 24th March 2050. This information is also there. And the latitude longitude information of the uh, uh, first line, last line at the central coordinate, this will be there. And uh, this is ascending pass. And uh, here you can see that uh, the uh, sample type, this is uh, the complex image, SLC image, single loop complex image. So this is also there. And uh, here you can see that uh, the HHSP, VH, and VV information is there, like four port polarizations are there. And if you will see when the data set was acquired in uh, in a single loop complex mode, at that time, number of loops in azimuth and range direction were one. And uh, the range uh, resolution is, here you can see that this is 2.86 meter, and azimuth resolution is approximately 3.20 meter, okay. And uh, the radar frequency, this is L band. So here you can see that 1236.499 megahertz frequency is there. So all the information could be explored because when you are working 
with uh, SR data set, you require to know about uh, the different parameters of the data set because all the characteristics and the parameters of the data set should be explained when you are when you are doing work with the sub data set. Now we are coming to the uh, type points uh, because this is important. Here we are going to have the information of uh, latitude, longitude, and uh, slant uh, range time as well as the incidence angle. First, I am going to open a, a intensity image. So here intensity image, it will take some time to create because sometimes uh, because the data set is very heavy, approximately more than 5 GB. So it's uh, uh, like uh, this, since this is uh, uh, virtually created, uh, this is not uh, uh, available, it is creating in the memory. So, uh, so it, it, may it may take time. Now, uh, by uh, zoom in or zoom out, uh, you can uh, see the values. And from here also, by moving the cursor, uh, 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 you will be able to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so here you can see that uh, this is the San Francisco area for which we are interested. Okay, now uh, I would like to show the the slant range time. Okay, so the slant range time image uh, will be generated. Uh, okay, this image is generated. So here you can see that. Uh, if you, you want to see what is the pixel value for this slant range, so you can simply go to the pixel info and uh, you can uh, you can click here. Uh, but here, if it is not appearing, so here you will have to check whether type point grids are expanded or not. So here you will have to expand the type point grids. Now just check the values in the near range. In the near range, what is the value? Okay. Slant range time is 4930067, uh, 15 like that. And uh, it is varying from near range to far range because here the, 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 the time will be maximum and in the near range, the time will be minimum because less time will be taken by the electromagnetic wave. And now uh, here the time will be recorded in nanoseconds. So what will happen when uh, the slant range time, this will be multiplied with the speed of light and when it will be divided by two, because this time is uh, representing, the slant range time is representing the time taken by the electromagnetic way in the two way propagation from sensor to the target and then target to the sensor. So when you divide it by speed of light divided by two, then you are going to get the, the time taken by the electromagnetic wave to track this target and that will be the range distance also. Now, when we are coming to the, to, to the incidence angle, so at this location, angle of incidence is 32.337, because in the type points grid, you are going to get all the information. And when you are moving from near range to far range, angle of incidence is also increasing. Now in the far range, and angle of incidence is 35.31624. Now suppose I uh, want to see some other statistics of uh, the this slant range time. So what I can do, I can go to the analysis tab and I can select statistics. If I will select the statistics, so it might be possible that in the first time you are not going to get uh, any view. So you can uh, click on this uh, refresh. So it is going to compute the statistics. So now here it is going to show the total number of pixels and it is going to show the minimum value that will be the, uh, the range distance in the near range. And this is the maximum value. This is the, the, uh, going to talk about the range distance for the farthest point and the mean value and other things are also there. We are not going in very much detail of all this. Okay, similarly, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, do it for the Incident angle also, you can you can double click and open it because statistics will work when you will open the particular particular file. So incident angle file is opened here. And uh, now uh, I am going to click on analysis tab and uh, going to statistics. Now from here again, I will have to, I will have to select the statistics. It is, uh, uh, I have refreshed it. Now it is, uh, it is, 
calculating the minimum and maximum value as well as the mean value. So here you can see that uh, minimum value is 32.32 and maximum value is 35.32. It means that within three degree variation, uh, the, this, uh, 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 this data was covered. Okay. So, and uh, now uh, we have seen the metadata and the other necessary file information. Now I'm going to close these windows because unnecessarily they are going to, they are going to uh, consume the memory. So now the, in the first step, what I am going to do, I am going to generate the, generate the uh, uh, subset, okay. So I am, uh, first I will have to analyze, uh, to do the subset first, what you will have to do, you will have to open any image like intensity, HH or intensity, maybe any image you can open. Okay, after opening the image, you can zoom and just see like which area should be, uh, uh, which area is useful for you. And if you want to see the value ranges, so you can click on pixel info and you can see the values. Uh, here you can see the values uh, ranges of the intensity that is square root of i square and plus uh, uh, the, that is the i square plus q square. This is 28907491819521952. Similarly, if you want to visualize an uh, image, uh, sorry, a real channel and imaginary channel, you can also open those channels. Okay. And here you can see that you can see that no fruitful information is present in the individual channels. Individual channels, it will be difficult to identify the individual targets, but when you will merge both the uh, products, real channel and email channels, you will be able to identify, identify all the products. Okay, uh, sorry, all the features. Okay, so uh, now uh, suppose I am, uh, similarly you can open all, but here I'm not going to open because it may take uh, some more memory. Uh, suppose I am going to open IVH, it will take some time to uh, create the image. Yeah, uh, if the systems are having lower configuration, so I will suggest you not to open too many scenes of the original data set because this data set is heavy and uh, this may take too much time. Okay, so now here you can see that IVH has also been generated. And if you want to see the pixel values of all these, so simply click on the pixel info and just move the cursor to the pixel locations, just move the cursor to the pixel locations, you will be able to, you will be able to see the values like for, I am waiting for the values. Sometimes you can also get this kind of thing. But now we are going to get here, here you can see that I is having minus 27288 for this particular pixel, Q is having minus 76845. Values will be ranging from minus to plus according to the radiometric, uh, radiometric property. And the intensity of this one will be I square plus Q square means uh, minus 27880 square plus minus 76845 square so that the value will be this one. Now here you can see that uh, the values are are, are ranging uh, ranging in 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 this manner in, in very high level. So that uh, uh, like for uh, different sensors, the value will be ranging differently. But here uh, we will have to uh, do the radiometric calibration so that uh, the the values will be restricted to very uh, in uh, zero to one. Okay. Now if you will see, this is the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. Okay. And uh, now in the in the Golden Gate Bridge, these are the towers. These are uh, these have also some visibility here. 
and uh, the ships and boats uh, uh, could also be seen in the data set here if uh, you will see these are the small boats so these could also be seen okay in the data similarly other bright uh, bright points in the image could be seen they are the boats okay now since the data set is very heavy so i am going to create the subset of the data set so to create the subset first you will have to open the intensity i have opened the intensity now i am going to take the subset for this much area only so i am going to take the subset subset option will be there in raster in raster i am going to click on subset now when i clicked on subset so this will create a thumbnail this may take 2 to 3 um 3 minutes time so uh, like either uh, you can do the subset uh, uh, by uh, uh, visualizing the data set in the thumbnail or uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can select the uh, like number of rows and columns or number of pixels you can select and you can now i am going to select with the help of this window you can you can by 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 left click you can select this and you can increase or decrease it so i am going to decrease it and here also i am going to decrease just select the left click okay now i am going to select from this corner also okay now this has been selected and i am going to decrease this size also now the estimated size is approximately approximately here you can check the raw storage size this is 657 mb so i am still interested to minimize the size okay so if you have the good system you can do the processing for the entire area because like uh, to do the processing for the entire area a good computing system will be required so now i am going to create the subset and this is the beauty of subset like if you will see that uh, by default all the bands will be checked so that the subset will be there for all the bands if someone is interested to work with only hh polarization or hb polarization any polarimetric combination so they can uncheck those band and uh, and they can check check the bands according to their choice okay not only this one the tie point grid also you can see that the slant is diamond in sense angle angle files uh, this will also be subset so that generally like in the image processing of the sar data set like uh, normal uh, softwares are generally not used the reason behind that uh, because uh, the in the processing of the sar data set the in for the the range uh, distance information incidence angle information they all will be used okay so uh, or and the and the real channel information and the image channel information all will be used and uh, and uh, and each and every resolution uh, uh, should be linked with the with the values so that is specialized softwares are used and uh, and uh, and when the these softwares are are developed the source codes are also available on github when the, these are developed so these things are kept in mind like uh, the each and every resolution of the sar data set should be linked with its real channel information its imaginary channel information uh, its uh, 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 your uh, uh, range distance value uh, range distance is the, is the time taken by the electromagnetic wave to track the target as well as the angle of incidence okay not only this when the cursor will move you will get the information of the latitude longitude so latitude longitude file should also be. when you will use a simply geotiff file in the, in a, any normal image processing software so uh, it might be possible that these information these linked information will be lost so you will not be able to get the desired uh, desired output so that uh, uh, when you uh, are developing uh, a code uh, uh, or developing a program for sar data processing so one should keep in mind that all the information should be linked with each and every resolution cell so now i have selected uh, the area and now i am going to click on okay so now i clicked on okay and what i am going to see that the subset has been created now this subset has been created and here uh, i am going to close the other views uh, 
like here uh, i am going to close all okay so this subset has been created okay now uh, you can see that uh, uh, only uh, this much area is uh, there to process so that it will take the less processing time there will be uh, uh, less memory consumed by the software to process the data set now suppose by mistake uh, you are closing this product explorer window and uh, pixel info so do not worry about that simply go to the view tab and there there will be the tool windows in the tool windows select product explorer so product explorer will appear again go to the uh, uh, view uh, tab and uh, click on the tool windows and select the pixel info so again pixel info will come okay so now we are going to do the processing of uh, the subset scene okay so here you can see that uh, subset values are there uh, real and imaginary channel values of these will be there okay so we are able to see and uh, you can uh, you can just check the values uh, uh, and uh, here uh, 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 we had checked previously also the values are ranging very high so and uh, there is a requirement to, because we are knowing that the single loop complex data set will have the slant edge ambiguity so what I am going to do, I will have to again select the product explorer. And what I am going to do, I am going to do the multi-looping of the data set. So I am going to click on radar and uh, going to the SAR utilities and going to click on the multi-looking. Okay. Now when I click the multi-looking tab, so here I will have to ensure that like uh, both options are there product number one that is the main data set and the second data set is subset so we are going to do the processing of the subset data set so we can click on this okay and uh, 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 here data output is uh, by default going in a directory d triple zero allows to data output so here i want to change the directory because i had already kept uh, this data set here i am going to keep in the same directory and going to write the name output so that all the output output will be saved here okay now i have created the directory also suppose you are interested to know about uh, the process so basically this uh, uh, tool is mainly developed for the research education and the scientific purpose so one can go with the help very good help file is uh, is uh, created uh, uh, for the snap so you can go to the help and uh, click on help so here you are going to get the option for the multi look operator what are the things going on in the multi looking okay all these things will be there okay so and not only this uh they are also having the a reference also a reference of the scientific literature or the space agency's guide so that one can go in detail to know more about uh, this tool similarly for all the tools like uh, like uh, for speckle filtering if you want to do speckle filtering also uh, the help is given as well as the references are given so one can go through the, these references to get the, the, the relevant information. Okay, so now we are going to perform the multi-looking operation and now we are going to select the processing parameters. So processing parameters, we are not going to disturb it because this is accurately, accurately uh, identified. Okay, number of loops uh, in uh, range direction uh, will be one and number of loops in edge mode direction will be two. And this will having the 5.8 to 1197 meter uh, square pixels. Okay. Now I am going to click on a run. Okay, click on run so that this process could be completed. Now I clicked on run. Now process has been completed. It took approximately seven seconds to complete it. Now I am going to just see what happened after generating the multi-loop product because here you can see that the product is named at underscore ML. Okay. So I'm going to see the 
the product. So intensity HH, I am going to open just for the comparison. Okay. Now here we are able to see this data set is multi-looked and more uh, clear view is there in comparison to the SLC because that ambiguity is removed here. Okay. Now I am interested, as I have talked that I want to do a visualization of uh, the RGB. Okay, based on the based on the uh, or the uh, real values or without a geometric calibration itself. Okay, so what I am going to do, I am going to uh, click on window. Okay, click on window, then open RGB window. Now in the open RGB window, here here uh, one will have to one will have to ensure that. If you want to open the RGB view for a particular window, so you will have to make sure that 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 particular that data product or that tab is open. Okay, so here it is showing that product number three is checked. Okay, and uh, and product number three is available either for HH or for HB. So I am going to select window and click on open RGB. Now here the, it is asking to generate the the uh, RGB of uh, different combinations. But here we are going to select the poly RGB. So in poly RGB, the combination of HH minus VB is taken to generate the red band. And combination of HV and VH is taken uh, to generate the green band. And HH plus VB is going to generate the blue band. It means that the HH minus VB will have the sensitivity for the double bounds scattering. HB and VH will have the sensitivity for the volumetric scattering, and HH plus VB will have the sensitivity for the surface scattering from the smooth surfaces. Now, when I am going to click on, and if you want to store it, you can store this RGB also. So, when I clicked on this, okay, so the RGB view will be generated. So, here you are going to see the RGB view. So uh, this uh, San Francisco bridge, uh, you can see that San Francisco bridge is visible, clearly visible, okay? Uh, in this data set and the urban area uh, could be seen that in the double bounce scattering, somewhere surface scattering, and uh, some will be mixed with the volumetric scattering. So those uh, scattering mechanisms could be easily identified because these scattering mechanisms only are used to identify either forest parameter, or for uh, or for soil moisture estimation, so these scattering elements uh, accurate estimation of scattering is essentially required because uh, this is some uh, uh, means one of the processing. Uh, but uh, like these, uh, the similar processing will be used to retrieve the uh, the several other parameters. Okay, so here uh, we are able to see the see the different objects and the and the different features, and here you can see that. Uh, the locations where double bounce scattering is dominant, that is mainly from the urban, and the water is showing the dominance of the surface scattering. Okay. Now uh, I have uh, checked uh, this and uh, and I stored also uh, here. So this is virtually stored. Now I am going to uh, uh, close this view, and now. After this, I am going to perform the radiometric calibration. Okay. So uh, now uh, when I am going to perform the radiometric calibration, so again, I will have to go to the radar. In radar, I am going to radio to, to the option radiometric, and then I will have to select the calibrate. Now, suppose anyone is interested what is going on in the radiometric calibration. Again, if you go to the help, so uh, the radiometric calibration, uh, the detailed information will be available in the help file. One can go with the radiometric calibration of sentinels, uh, like what is the formula used for the Sentinel-1 and others, in VSAT SR data set, LOS Pulsar, Cosmo SkyMed, and uh, the references are also given. So uh, this is very good tool for the developers as well as for the researchers and the students. So, uh, now I am going to select the processing parameters. So uh, one can select save as complex output also if they want to do the processing of the complex data set. But now I am going to generate the sigma or db image. So I am going to check the sigma or db. Now, now when I check the sigma or db image, so uh, when you click on run, the process 
will run and now the process is completed in two seconds. Now the process has been completed. And here you can see that uh, ML underscore calibration is there. It means that the first multi-looking was performed, then the calibration was performed. Now you can check the values of the sigma naught, HH and HV. Okay, now the values will be in negative. Just see here, values are for water, this is minus 20, minus 28, minus 37. Uh, for uh, 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 like here, you can uh, you can you can compare in in, in both. Okay, so uh, so here you can go and you can check for the individual pixels. What are the values? You can you can check easy. Okay, and uh, the uh, tie point gate values are also there. Like what is the slant edge time as well as the incidence angle time for the particular location? All these things will be available. Now this is the sigma naught back scatter image. Now what I am feeling that okay there is a, there is some kind of uh, some kind of noise. So what I can do I can go for the go go for the our uh, 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 speckle removal. So I am going for the speckle filtering. Now selected the single product speckle filter. Now I selected the speckle, single product speckle filter. So here again, I will have to check. So the fourth product is selected. Now the output will be the multi-looked calibrated speckle filter. Okay, now in the processing parameters, I am going to select uh, gamma map filter. You can select any filter, okay. And you can check the accuracy. And now I have selected, uh, suppose I am going to select uh, uh, suppose three by three only selecting because it has already multi-looked already. Multi-looking is also going to perform a one kind of uh, one kind of smoothing because uh, it will consider the several pixels to uh, generate a bigger pixel. And uh, due to that, uh, uh, the average pixel value will be taken uh, uh, or assigned to the pixel so that there will be one level of smoothing in multi-looking itself. So seven level level of smoothing I want to do with the minimum uh, kernel size. So now I have selected and I am, I am going to do this speckle filter. So I have now selected and I am going to click on run. So now I clicked on run. Now the process has been completed. And after that, I am going to close this window. Now after closing this window, now I am going to the product explorer. Now in the product explorer, this new product has been uh, Added and now it is appearing. So I am going to sigma not open sigma not HH. So and sigma not HV also. So here you can see that what difference you are getting getting in sigma not HH with speckle filtering and without speckle filtering. So this much uh, this difference you can easily observe. Okay, less noise is there in the speckle filter product. Similarly, in sigma not HV also you are going to get the uh, less uh, speckle filter product. Okay. And uh, from the pixel info, you can check the you can check the you can check the values also. Okay, the speckle filter data set will have uh, these values, and you can check these values. And uh, now after that, uh, I am going to perform uh, uh, perform the radiometric tyrant correction. So I am going to select radar, and uh, I am going to select the geometric. In geometric, I will have the option for the Tyran correction. In the Tyran correction, I am going to perform the range Doppler Tyran correction. I selected a range Doppler Tyran correction. Okay. Now in this range Doppler Tyran correction, I have selected this speckle filter product. And uh, after that, I am going to the processing parameters because here, if you will see the output name will have the underscore TC means that this product is multi-looked, calibrated, speckle filters, and Tyrant character. So now I'm going to click on processing. So here default SRTM three seconds has been selected. Now I'm going to select SRTM one second grid, okay? Now by default, this is bilinear interpolation. You can select the nearest neighbor also, okay? It depends on you. And uh, now, uh, suppose uh, uh, I am going to uncheck the mask out area without elevation. 
and uh, by default selected source band will be there because this will be uh, the tyrant correction will be performed on, on the on the uh, sigma naught hh hvbh and vv all and uh, uh, what i was interested to show you like when you will go in the help file the detailed information of the rainy doctor tyrant correction is given here how the algorithm is running what it is doing all the information is given Okay, radiometric normalization is done with the help of the local incidence angle. Okay, so uh, uh, this normalization will be done. Okay, and for the reference, again, the literatures were cited for the algorithm, one can go through the literature. Okay, now I have selected input and output parameters. Now I am going to click run, click on run the process. Now, so what will happen, it will, it will download the DM in the background. Now the process is completed. Now, if I am interested to see the different bands, okay, I think I had not checked. So I am going to, going to just close this product. And I am again going to run this process, run a radiometric calibrate because I am interested to see the DM also. So it was a radar, geometric, talent correction, range doctor talent correction. Okay. And in the processing parameters, we will have to select the DM, incidence angle, and the local incidence. All. Okay. And I am going to click on now run. So it is asking that, uh, do you want to overwrite the existing file because one product has already been generated? So I am saying yes. Because that product was generated in which we had not uh, taken the digital elevation model. Uh, we had not uh, 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 generated the output of the digital elevation model. So this is taking very much time. So we will have to wait for this. Otherwise, I think in overwriting, it is taking very much time. So, okay, before closing it, I think we should wait for one to two more minutes. After that, uh, we, will, we will close or some other option we will see. In between that, if there is any question, I will be happy to answer. So, since this is taking uh, very much time, so I am planning to close it. Because sometimes in overwriting the another product, it takes very much time. So in place of doing overwriting, you can generate the fresh product. I am going to radar, talent correction, then it operate talent correction. Now the product has been selected. Now I am going to change the name so that at least it will not overwrite the another product. I will check the name with underscore one. Now going to the processing parameter, selecting SRTM one second grid, bilinear interpolation. 
dm cn single file local cn single file and again i am going to click on run Now we will have to wait for this process. So, uh, if there are any question from participant side, so so I will be happy to answer. Uh, now, one uh, very good question is asked. Uh, about uh, the uh, uh, identifying the terrain changes and landslide. Yes, uh, people are working on this, uh, utilizing the multi-temporal uh, data set. They are trying to find out the landslide. Several studies uh, have been uh, published and people are, people are working on that to find the landslide zones using the multi-temporal SAR data sets. And uh, there are different approaches also, like uh, doing the normal change detection, as well as uh, the technique which you had mentioned using D in SAR and uh, SBAS and PS, uh, PS in SAR techniques also. One minute, I am going to restart the software. Product, this file, one minute only, because uh, Now, uh, I closed the software and reopened it. And I opened the multi-looked calibrated speckle filter product. Okay. And now I am going to perform the uh, radiometric terrain correction. Terrain correction, the range doctor terrain correction. And uh, I'm going to just change the name and collection. Processing parameters. One second. Grid, bilinear interpolation. Then uncheck the mask out areas, the DEM, then local incidence angle. Now I'm going to create the, I am going to run the process. Yes, now there was some problem uh, when it was overwriting the product. So this problem was there. Now this process has been completed in 10, 10 seconds only. Okay. So now what I am going to get, this is orthorectified and current corrected product you are able to see. And here you are going to see the local incidence angle. This is the local incidence angle image. And this is the elevation file. SRTM, one second, great. Okay, so uh, you will be able to get this information. 
And uh, now after that, suppose you are interested to export this view to, uh, to the uh, Google Earth KMZ. So you can right click on it, then you can export at KMZ. And here uh, the data set is saved here and the D drive in the folder LOS Pulsar output. So I'm going to save this file there. Okay. If there will be some kind of a processing error, so it might be possible that you can also get also get uh, some error or uh, uh, some uncertainty in the positional accuracy. So now the uh, the scanned file has been generated and uh, the Google Earth is already installed in my system. So I'm just going to double click it so that uh, uh, I will be able to see the uh, uh, the appearance of the data set on Google Earth. Now here you can see that the data set it is present and here you can and here you can see the visualization. What is the appearance of different kind of objects in the image? Okay, and the values the values are ranging. This is the VB image, so this is ranging from minus five point four four to minus twenty six point eight five. So uh, you can also do the image processing, and there are several other options. If you will explore, if you will explore this uh, particular tool. So this is not only used for the, uh, like uh, uh, only uh, to demonstrate the SAR data set, this is also used for the higher studies as well as for the several projects works also. So I will suggest you uh, not to uh, not to stop your data processing for the uh, this basic product radiometric calibration. You can also go learn for the interferometry, interferogram formation. So here you can find out the digital elevation model height information and any surface movement also, as well as the displacement information. PS in SAR and S bus processing options are also there. And uh, here uh, uh, the polymetric information is also there. One can go for the classification of land use and land cover. There are several polymetric modeling approaches are also given here. And there are a few applications like ocean applications like ocean object like ship detection. Ship detection could be done with this uh, ocean object detection tool. And oil spill detection could also be done. Oil spill area could be easily detected. And uh, wind field estimation in the sea could also be done. So urban area mapping could also be done with one algorithm, speckle uh, divergence algorithm, and change detection could also be done. This tool is also highly used for the soil moisture estimation uh, with the help of the Sentinel data set and the other data sets. So here you can see that uh, these uh, models uh, are there. IEM model to uh, retrieve the uh, soil moisture as well as the surface roughness. So, and there are several other applications. If you explore, you can go in detail. Okay, and uh, these studies are uh, not only used for the education purpose, but for the operational projects also. Okay, so I have completed the practical exercise from my side. If uh, anyone has completed, or if you have any question, then we can discuss. Now, uh, one person has finished the terrain correction, but all channels are black. Uh, I think there must be some problem in uh, reading the digital elevation model, or it might be possible that you have closed the subset or the original file. Just check your subset uh, if, it, if it has been properly saved. Okay. And just check the other files also. Uh, if still problem is existing, so I will suggest you to, okay, I think uh, problem is fixed now. Any other question?
So what I will suggest you, uh, you can uh, uh, explore uh, the full extent of uh, the tool and uh, you can develop your own tool also. So if you will, if you will see uh, the, uh, I have not gone in the, uh, not uh, gone in the detail of the polarimetry and interferometry because that will require uh, several more lectures on polarimetry and interferometry, then also it will be, uh, it will be easy to demonstrate those tools. Now, when you will go, so there are very good tutorials. So those tutorials are maintained in the documentation. In documentation, you are going to get the tutorials. If you click this uh, tutorials, you are going to get the different tutorials which are prepared for SNAP. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, yes, now, uh, and here uh, you can get the tutorial for Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, Sentinel-3, for all. But here, um, we are mainly interested in Sentinel-1 toolbox because this is related to SAR applications and SAR data processing. So there are total 22 tutorials, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you can see all the tutorials, and uh, you can download also because few tutorials are uh, documents, few are the videos. Like here, uh, LOS Pulsar ortho rectification process is there. You can just check this also. And this is command line insert tutorial. So if anyone is interested to uh, do the command line insert tutorial, insert processing, so they can do it. And how to do the displacement mapping, the thing which you were asking, like landslide uh, uh, detection and other thing. So uh, if the landslide uh, area is large area and due to that some displacement uh, occurred, so that displacement mapping could be done with the help of or the Sentinel-1 data set because the data set is globally available for the entire globe, uh, for the entire area uh, and, uh, and the repetitivity is also good. So you can follow this tutorial to uh, find out the displacement. Now, several agencies, they are interested in the flood mapping and monitoring. So how to do the flood mapping and monitoring with the Sentinel-1 data with the Sentinel-1 toolbox. So that information, uh, that information could be uh, obtained from this document, okay. So these are well-prepared document and one can go through it and you will have the complete information on the flood mapping and all these things. I think, uh, yes, yes. So flood mapping and monitoring you can, you can do. Okay, and uh, uh, the several options or several techniques are given for the different applications. Okay, similarly, uh, one minute. I am selecting the Sentinel-1 toolbox. Yes, now, after that, uh, if one is interested to do the uh, like several tutorials on flood mapping, if one is interested to do to land cover classification, so again, they can do with the GRD product, that is the ground range uh, product of the georeference product of the uh, uh, Sentinel-1. So they can download that product and uh, they can use this tutorial to uh, generate the, uh, the land cover map. Now offset tracking, uh, offset tracking, this tool is widely used uh, uh, for the velocity mapping of the glacier. So glacier movement could be done, uh, but this is not the INSAR based, this is intensity based. So offset tracking has been widely used and successfully used for the, for the glacier movement and its velocity estimation. Now, uh, if one is interested to do the radar set to interferometry, how to work with the radar set, because radar set data sets are also widely used. So radar set to interferometry is also there, one can do the radar set interferometry. Now, uh, uh, how to uh, retrieve the digital elevation model from Sentinel-1 data set? This is a very important study uh, to generate the digital elevation model. So uh, generating the uh, uh, digital elevation model from uh, Sentinel-1 data set may be explored uh, 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 from your side. If uh, you are interested, you can follow this tutorial. Okay, so you can follow this tutorial and you will be able to generate the, generate the uh, uh, digital elevation model. And uh, 
some videos are also there like how to do the interferometry so a uh, good amount of videos are also there like there are uh, option for the graph builder also like you can combine the several processes and you can simply click one run so you can get the final output so you can make a graph and uh, that is also possible to do all the processing by doing one click and uh, this is the tutorial on use of uh, use of sentinel 1 and sentinel 2 data set uh, for uh, analyzing the object so this is going to uh, give the uh, 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 synergistic use of sentinel 1 sar data set and sentinel 2 optical multispectral data set similarly sar basics uh, is also there and sar polarimetry analysis like suppose you want to do the quad pole analysis fully polarimetric analysis so that uh, you can do with uh, this tutorial. This tutorial is on SAR polarimetry and analysis. Very good tutorial is made. And uh, you, can, uh, you can explore this tutorial uh, for the polarimetric analysis because there are several models developed based on the polarimetry to retrieve the soil moisture, to retrieve the above ground biomass of the forest uh, area, or uh, to retrieve the, to retrieve the uh, several other biophysical and geophysical parameters. So this is going to provide you the information of the polarimetric tool. This is based, uh, uh, I think the, the data set is at set 2 uh, for the San Francisco area. So the, that data set uh, polarimetric analysis has been shown here. So one can go with the polarimetric analysis of this data also. Now, after that, uh, there is one more tool on the time series analysis with Sentinel-1, how to perform the time series analysis to find out the changes. So this time series analysis could also be done and this tutorial is available. So all the tutorials are available and uh, one, can, uh, one can follow these tutorials. Like here, uh, If you go to the snap uh, link, so here there will be option for tutorials, and from there you can get the different tutorials. Okay, and uh, here Sentinel One toolbox is there. In Sentinel toolbox, there are total twenty-two tutorials, and uh, all the tutorials would be explored and analyzed. like time series analysis, polarimetric analysis, Sentinel-1 strip map, interferometry, SAR polarimetry, all the tutorials are there. Some are videos, some are document. So you can explore uh, the tutorials according to your application. Uh, now I have completed my lecture from my side. So, I have one question from my side, Dr. Shashi. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, is there a Python uh, uh, interface for this Snap Toolbox? Yes, yes. Snappy Toolbox is there. As well as one toolbox is also there. That is PyroSAR. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply if you search, uh, so that uh, toolbox will be available. Uh, here, one minute like uh, snappy yes like this snappy you can uh, you can explore so this is there and uh, now uh, people are also uh, uh, using uh, the the pyrosar so in simply if you say, simply type pyrosar So Python interface of the SAR data set you are going to get on, get on uh, uh, GitHub. So uh, 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 like on, on this website also. So this is uh, not only uh, supporting this, uh, PyDOSAR is not only supporting the Python framework for, for Snap, this is also supporting for the Gamma. Gamma is a very expensive software. 
and uh, this is also very good software for the SAR interferometry. So one can explore uh, the scripts of the of the Python for both SNAP and 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 Gamma both. Thank you, thank you. So uh, I think I don't think there are any other questions. So with that uh, we will end uh, today's session. So on behalf of uh, the Technical Committee of Image Analysis and Data Fusion GRSS Society, I would like to thank Dr. Shashi for taking so much effort in preparing the material, especially the lectures and the practical sessions. Based on the feedback that we are receiving in the chat, it was really very helpful for all the attendees and they would definitely have benefited from your experience and your knowledge that you have shared here. So on behalf of all the organizing committee, I would like to thank you for uh, giving so much valuable input to the community. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Shri. Thank you, Dr. Ujjal, uh, for uh, successfully conducting this session. And uh, I will be very happy if the participants, they can uh, give the reference of uh, they can refer this uh, tutorial and they can ask any question by referring that. Okay. So if they will ask the question, I my email ID is already there. I can type also. So both the email ID because IRS email ID she at the rate IRS dot in. So this email ID as well as my Gmail ID. So uh, they can, uh, they are uh, free to ask uh, the questions and if uh, they are interested to take any suggestion, I will be happy to help them. Okay. Thank That's you. very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shashi. Thank you everyone, everyone for attending the session. We will start join again tomorrow at the same time uh, for the next session and next speaker. Thank you.